It's just amazing to see the news day after day. Besides this Planned Parenthood issue, just the the political news that is coming up, the bombshell that the CDC is destroying vaccine documents. This is a, a Congressman Bill Posey on Tuesday. Made his last stand on the House of the Floor. He was given five minutes to speak, and he talked about how the co-authors of this vaccine study that they tried to cover up, the whistleblower Thompson pointed out, said they all got together in a room, decided what they were going to get rid of. They had a big garbage can there and just start trashing through the stuff because, you know, you can't can't be allowed to see what actually happened in these studies. It's not just the vaccines. It's also Climate Gate, where we weren't allowed to see the emails that were paid for by the public, paid for university professors who were doing research. That research conclusions had been published. There wasn't anything proprietary about it at the time. It was being used for public policy. But, of course, we were not allowed to see the raw data. It's pretty easy to put any kind of conclusion you want to in something when no one is allowed to look at your raw data. That's the way the game is rigged. Of course, we see that with these treaties that are being done, but there's also a lot of other secrets that are going to be coming out. We've got a story we're going to talk about a little bit. The man behind the white safaris who feasts on baby elephants. The Lion King, I guess we could call him, or the Lion King, Robert Mugabe. A lot of similarities between Mugabe and Obama. And we're going to talk about that because now the Obama administration is looking to use the Lacey Act to send this dentist back to Robert Mugabe. What's up behind that? Do you know about Zimbabwe? Do you know about their economy? Do you know about their dictator for life that they've had? Do you know how this is a place very similar to North Korea? We've seen the Lacey Act used before in the Gibson guitar raids. Do you remember how that turned out? They did in January of 2014. They did a government issue of a Les Paul guitar just to celebrate their victory over the government. But now it's back. The Lacey Act, where if you don't break American laws, but perhaps break a foreign law, they can get at you that way. Particularly if there's something to be gained politically about it. We've talked about, uh, we talked about it on Tuesday how they were ignoring everything that was happening at Planned Parenthood, certainly in the Obama administration, but also within the media, and then focusing on Cecil the Lion. So we're going to go into that in a great deal of detail. We also have some updates to the Planned Parenthood situation. Several articles. We had the article yesterday, the original one from uh, Mikhail Thelen, talking to the hackers. They said, hey, look, this is a false flag, this second attack on their website has been done to get donors to support them. We're going to talk about additional evidence that has come to light in that. We're going to talk about other health news, not just the vaccine cover-up and uh, the CDC, but now Rhode Island is mandating HPV vaccines for 7th graders. Sounds kind of like Rick Perry. I wonder if their governor, governor has connections to Merck, like Rick Perry did indirectly at the time. We've also got an article on uh, from the Drudge Report it looks like radiation can cause cancer after all. But don't worry about that because now we've got robot magnets that can eat brain tumors. It's not a tumor. <laughs> Remember uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to solve all these technological problems for us. Uh, at the same time, they're coming up with massive laser weapons. It was only a week ago that we were talking about the Pentagon's vision of warfare in 2050 but you can see the article up on infowars.com 1984 comes to europe the end of freedom in, of speech in spain even jokes about royals are illegal i guess so are the monty python jokes about the spanish inquisition because that's essentially what we have here i guess alex didn't expect the spanish inquisition uh no actually they knew it i guess it's, it's still annoying when people come up and demand that you cannot photograph public buildings, uh, cathedrals, take away your film, erase it. This is what they do at federal buildings already in the United States, of course. They do that kind of, they, they say, well, you can't take a picture of the Federal Reserve. You can't take a picture of this particular building, even though anyone can go to the Internet and they can look at Google Maps and see that building. Taking a picture on a street corner does not present a security risk to anybody. And let's understand that all of this stuff about national security, 
Homeland Security. It's just a way of taking your freedom, right? Let's just call it Homeland Taking Away Your Freedom Department or the Transportation Taking Away Your Freedom Administration. Whenever you see the word security from our government, just understand that it's all about taking away your freedom, enslaving you. You're not going to get any security from it. As I've said many times, a maximum security area is called a prison. And that's what they're building here in America. They're building it all over the world. That's why we talk about prison planet. Let's go to that report. 1984 comes to Europe. Orwell's nightmare scenario come true. Ladies and gentlemen, we filed a series of reports for the radio and TV shows at Infowars.com. Alex Jones here reporting live from Barcelona, Spain, beautiful historic city on the Mediterranean Sea. But I was just pinching myself like it was a dream. The fact that it's in mainstream newspapers, what they call a bizarre series of laws that have been rammed through the Spanish government and regulations banning any form of criticism of government, period. Government services, you name it. And it's also extending on to corporations. And again, even the newspapers in the UK and in Germany say this is just bizarre. I, I, I mean, it's so over the top, it's beyond 1984 for the types of offenses that people got arrested for uh, in that fictional world that George Arwell came up with. And then it just hit me. The reason all of this is happening is Spain has submitted to the globalists and the bankers because Juan Carlos is right at the top of the pyramid and is being sucked dry right now. And they're using that money to consolidate the takeover of U.S. roads, U.S. water districts. It's Juan Carlos and companies like Centra that are at the heart of these no-bid contracts taking over U.S. infrastructure. So just as the Spanish are conquered, then their money is used to come in and conquer the infrastructure of the United States. We're all under attack by this. And it's the corporate welfare, the banker bailouts, uh, the state-backed companies like Centra and others that are able to do this, turning our roads into toll roads, doubling and tripling our water prices. This is the scientific tyranny. But the real reason they're putting in draconian anti-freedom of speech laws and other things here in Spain that even mainstream media publications call 1984 and over the top and bizarre is because they're getting ready to really drop the hammer and have a worldwide financial collapse. And I believe Spain, that's why we're here, is the next domino. Uh, the tyrants love to have the facade of freedom. And when they start removing the veneer of liberty, when they start taking that away, you know big stuff's about to happen. Look at what's happening this week in China. Look at what's happening uh, in Greece. Look what's happening all over the world. And, and it lets you know this is a very, very serious time to be alive. So uh, there's nothing like eyes and ears on the ground to really confirm what we've been seeing in the press and what we've been getting from our guests and experts is that the globalists see humans basically like another species, a worthless group. They've got their computers, their robots, their automation. And this implosion of the economy is about bringing us to our knees and domesticating us and conditioning us to submit. More reports to follow at Infowars.com. Humans have the power. And so if you take action... If you get involved, if you inform others, there's no way that the technocrats will be able to get away with this. So it just hit me that this is about the collapse being imminent, not just of Spain, but the entire continent of Europe. And then out of that crisis, the true world government will be formed. All right, Alex Jones signing off. More reports coming at Infowars.com. Again, we're going to have some more reports from Alex Jones later in the broadcast. Now, earlier this week, we talked about, and I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, we talked about how people were very upset about Cecil the Lion. We had Jimmy Kimmel crying about it. All the news media was talking about Cecil the Lion. Everywhere you went, there were slideshows. But nobody was talking about the latest revelation of the Planned Parenthood video. They weren't talking about the previous ones either. That was all being pushed into the background. And so I asked the question, we talked about the different parallels with it. The idea that this was a gray legal area, that there was luring going on to get this lion off of the preservation area into an area where he could be killed. He was killed in a way where he died under a great deal of pain over a very long period of time. Trophies were taken. 
where they cut his head off as a trophy. And we said, interesting, isn't it? The parallels that could be drawn to the Planned Parenthood situation where they go into these gray areas. They lure women into the clinics under the promise of health care or family planning and then push abortions on them, as Abby Johnson testified uh, this week. Then they put them through a procedure where there's a lot of pain. They chop up their body parts and sell them off, not as trophies, but in order to buy their trophy cars, their trophy homes. That's the parallel that we should be talking about. Of course, there's other parallels. USA Today, uh, Kit Daniels also ran an article about it, the parallels with ignoring the murder of black people as if it's a license to kill if you have a badge in this country. It's open season. There isn't any preservation park for black people in the cities or for the rest of us for that matter. We're following along all of society. This isn't just about black people. Everybody is getting shot more frequently because that's the way they are engaging the public now. So when we look at this, there's even one more thing that has come up, of course, and that is now the calls for punishment of this dentist to extradite him to Zimbabwe. And of course, the Obama administration has had a petition on the White House uh, saying, yes, we want him extradited and punished in Zimbabwe for this because he didn't break any American laws. He broke Zimbabwe laws, they say. Well, I don't know. Do they have any laws in Zimbabwe? This is a place very much like North Korea. Robert Mugabe, dictator for life. He's 91 years old. He became dictator back in 1980. 35 years he's been there. And if you want to know what kind of banana republic Obama is trying to create in America, take a look at Robert Mugabe's Zimbabwe. It's absolutely amazing. Per capita income of $935. Okay, that's about $75 a month. $19 a week, okay? Now, in that environment, this dentist and others have paid $55,000 to do a trophy hunt. Now, you may not like trophy hunt. We've had a lot of people say, well, trophy hunting, that's awful. Well, okay, fine. But if it was not a corrupt government, that trophy hunting could be used, as it has been used in other places, to preserve animals, to allow a controlled kill of some animals so the other animals can be preserved. So it's not entirely bad. But when you run it like Zimbabwe is running it, then that $55,000 just probably went into the pocket of their lying king, Mugabe. Look at this article. Five months ago, he had his 91st birthday. This is from the Washington Post. Zimbabwe's Mugabe condemns white safaris while he eats baby elephant at birthday bash. They say, when considering what to get Mugabe for his birthday, one must first can understand that Zimbabwe's president is a man who demands the finest. His birthday parties don't cost hundreds of thousands, they cost millions. His parties aren't attended by thousands of people, but by tens of thousands. And they don't eat elephant, they eat baby elephant. Dumbo. This was the predicament in which one local landowner named Tendai Musasa found himself when trying to figure out what he could get Mugabe for his 91st birthday party. What do you get a dictator who has everything and who owns the company, country and is going to uh, take severe recrimination on you if you don't give him massive amounts of money? So this party, as I point out, cost over a million dollars. The first quote from this guy says, well, we regard him as our father, says Musasa. Yeah, just like they love the North Korean leaders and they cry rivers of tears when they die. And if they don't, they get carried off to the camps. He says, for such a courageous man who years ago instituted violence and contentious land redistribution policies, Muasa would bring out the big guns. He would kill a baby elephant. He said, well, it's no big deal. The elephant was no good anyhow. But this elephant was not enough, just the baby elephant. They say he, Musasa, also submitted for mass consumption two buffaloes, two sables, five impalas. There was also a lion that was shot and mounted. Oh, a trophy lion for Mugabe, the guy who's now demanding, along with Obama, that this dentist be sent back. And who knows what they're going to do to him because he went trophy hunting, because he paid the government of Zimbabwe, $55,000 to do that. That's, as I said, a legitimate thing to do if you've got a legitimate government. 
But they also gave him a lion that was shot and mounted. This is for Zim, uh, Mugabe's birthday party. They also gave him a crocodile that was shot and mounted. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this Friday, July 31st, 2015. I'm going to go back to what is going on with the fight to export or to extradite, I should say, the dentist. Of course, we're not going to extradite or send or deport any illegal aliens, no matter the fact that they're killing people in this country. Can't be bothered with that. But we can extradite this dentist to Zimbabwe where he paid that corrupt government $55,000 to do a trophy hunt. And we're going to talk about Zimbabwe, kind of give you some context for what the Obama administration is doing, because there's another context of this as well. There's also the raid on Gibson guitar from four years ago, because they're using that same law, the Lacey Act, to come after this dentist. Before we do, as I mentioned, this is the end of July. We've had free shipping at InfoWarsLife.com. Today is the last day for free shipping in July, and we have a special. Buy two silver bullet, get two free. It's 50% off. Normally, we sell out a silver bullet during the winter months, so right now is a perfect time to stock up on your 30 parts per million colloidal silver. You can get it at InfoWarsLife.com as well as everything on the site with free shipping today. Again, free shipping for July ends today. That's at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, getting back to what I was talking about with this uh, export of uh, the, the extradition, I keep calling it the export, the extradition of this uh, dentist to Zimbabwe. Uh, this is based on a, started out with a petition on the White House uh, site. Of course, the Obama administration doesn't pay too much attention to petitions. We had a petition to uh, get rid of Piers Morgan. <laughs> they didn't do anything about that. But let's go back to uh, this birthday party for Robert Mugabe. This is the one where he condemned white safaris while he's eating baby elephant at a birthday bash. And this just happened five months ago. This is something that is very recent. And as I mentioned, not only were they killing baby elephants for food, they were also eating buffaloes, sables, five impalas. This is just from one fellow who was a landowner that needed to suck up to the dictator. Uh, he also shot and mounted a lion because we had a lot of people say, well, you know, I understand hunting, but only if it's for food. I don't understand trophy hunting. Well, they did trophy hunting for Mugabe as well. And as I pointed out, trophy hunting can be used as a means of preservation if you don't have a corrupt banana republic thug dictator like Robert Mugabe. This is a guy, let me, let me give you an idea because this is really where all of this white privilege, this uh, Marxist education system that we've got with people like Bill Ayers and others that are allied with Obama. This is where all this white privilege narrative, the, the hatred, the racism towards one group, this is where it leads. You want to know where it leads? Take a look at what happened in Zimbabwe. And of course, there was a lot there for people to be angry about. They'd suffered under white colonial rule from Cecil Rhodes for a very long time. It was called Rhodesia before they overthrew it. But they jumped out of the frying pan and into the fire. This guy says, there's some couple of quotes from Robert Mugabe. The only white man you can trust is a dead white man. Our party must continue to strike fear in the heart of the white man, our real enemy. Now, the only difference in what Robert Mugabe says and what you'll hear at a university, if you're foolish enough to pay the tuition to go to one today, the only thing you'll hear is our party must continue to strike fear about white privilege. White privilege is our real enemy, but eventually that's going to be focused on the white man. And so Robert Mugabe is very upset about these white safaris. He said uh, over a feast of exotic animals, he took to the pulpit, they say, this is a Washington Post article five months ago, to excoriate safaris. He says Zimbabwe has a lot of safaris, but very few of them are African. Most of them are white-owned. In our region, we have the most safaris and animals. Now... Why wouldn't they have black people in Zimbabwe taking trophy hunts? Well, because they make $900 a year. $900 a year. The dentist paid $55,000 because he doesn't live in a Marxist dictatorship. He lived in America. But, of course, we're going to go down that direction. But let's look at what happened with the Gibson raid. And, of course, we reported on this back in April, back in. Uh, August of 2011, headlines on Infowars at the time were Feds raid Gibson Guitar Factory over protected wood. 
Another one, CEO of Gibson Guitars. Main competitor is a huge Democrat donor. This is the Lacey Act. This is what they want to use against this dentist. Now, to sum it up, and this was an article that was done in January of 2014 by Front Page Magazine, because Gibson at that time was commemorating Obama's raid with a government series of guitars patterned on Les Paul, but using the wood that they got back. And I want to go over that as well as some more information about this Cecil the Lion thing and the hypocrisy from yet another angle that we see from the Obama administration right when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We're going to take your calls in the third hour. We've also got reports coming up from Alex Jones. I was talking just before the break about the leader of Zimbabwe complaining about white safaris when he is feasting on baby elephant at his 91st birthday a couple of months ago. And also talking about why he's disturbed that there's just so many people coming to his country, ripping them off with safaris when he's getting $55,000 per safari. And understand, that's not going for animal preservation as it should. That's probably going into this corrupt kleptocrat's pockets. That's the way this has worked. He has parties that cost millions of dollars, has tens of thousands of people there. They feast on these exotic animals, and he has his own trophy lion as well as a trophy crocodile, and that was just from one guy who gave him gifts. Now, of course, in America, we've got IRS political scandals where they're targeting people politically. They are committing perjury. They're committing cover-up. Will the Obama administration investigate that? Of course not. They're not going to investigate Benghazi. They're not going to investigate Clinton. They're not going to investigate the VA or Fast and Furious. They're not going to look at the price fixing and the money laundering of the big banks. Uh, No, they just give them a slap on the wrist, a very small fine. They're not going to even look at the jihadi shooter who was going around targeting military recruitment statements. No, no, no. It was, I don't know, it was maybe it was he was on alcohol or pot or something like that. That was the excuse had absolutely nothing to do with terrorism. That couldn't have possibly been his motivation. They're not going to look at the shooter. won't even talk about this shooter in San Francisco that resonated with so many people when Donald Trump started talking about it. No, can't talk about that. Can't talk about the fact that we don't deport violent criminals who come into our country violating our laws, crossing the borders. No, it's a catch and release program for our violent criminals here. But if we have a dentist that we can make a big deal out of, get some political capital from by having a petition on the White House site and then saying we're going to export him under the Lacey Act to this dictator in Zimbabwe. They're all for that. Yeah, they're all for that. They'll talk all about Cecil the Lion, not about the black people that are getting shot in America, not about the children that are getting ground up for trophy cars. Now, where are they going to send him? Well, Zimbabwe, this place is uh, high on the list of Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch for places that violate rights, violate the rights to shelter, to food, to freedom of movement, residence, freedom of assembly, the protection of the law. There's been alleged assaults on the media, political opposition, civil activists, and human rights defenders. Yeah, you're going to get the iron fist of Robert Mugabe. Look at their economics, very much like what Obama is creating in America, a place with high taxes and tariffs for private enterprises and government spending It's about 67% of GDP, and that was back in 2007. Sounds like America, doesn't it? Where all the small businesses are closing up, and if you want a job, you got to go to work for the Obama administration. The Zimbabwe Conservation Task Force released a report in June 2007 estimating that 60% of Zimbabwe's wildlife had died since 2000 due to poaching and deforestation. They say that uh, lines of credit at all the international financial institutions have been frozen because guess what? This is the place that has the legendary hyperinflation that everybody talks about. Inflation rose at an annual rate of 32% in 1998 from 32%, which is pretty horrible, to an official estimated high of 11,200,000% in August of 2008. 11 million percent inflation in Mugabe's Zimbabwe, where we want to send this dentist back to be punished. By this, by this authoritarian regime. It got so bad that they created a $100 billion note. I don't imagine 
Mugabe wanted his face on that particular one. Maybe he did. I don't know. The guy's got uh, no limit to his ego. And then they officially suspended use of the Zimbabwean dollar in April of 2009. Now, what's going on with their economy? It's basically nothing but tourism, nothing but safaris. But he complains because it's white people coming there. And as I pointed out, Mugabe doesn't like white people. He says the only white man you can trust is a dead white man. Our party must continue to strike fear in the heart of the white man, our real enemy. But they want the tourist dollars. But people are starting to figure it out. Tourism fell 75% back in 2000. It's still going down. It's less than 20% of the hotel rooms had been occupied at that time. And, of course, there was a massive purge of white people when he got in there, so he doesn't really have anybody to blame uh, except for the white people that are abroad. He's still blaming white people after he's been dictator for 35 years. Understand, in 2005, the government started making overtures, said, well, we'll let some white farmers come back. Uh, they had, at that time, four or 500 still left in the country. You know, it's kind of like the number of Jews in Poland after World War II. They even let some of the farmers get some leases, but they said, yeah, these other guys, we're going to take their stuff, uh, the ones that are still here. Anybody foolish enough to go in there and get back into that thing ought to have uh, their head examined. It was just two days ago that Mugabe threatened to expel U.S. and British diplomats, but we're going to extradite this dentist to Zimbabwe. They say he has threatened to expel ambassadors from the U.S. and Britain, accusing them of the problems in his country. He says, British and American ambassadors, what kind of people are they? They are no good for us. Behave, and you will be at peace with us. Misbehave, we will kick your bottom. That's a quote. That's a quote from uh, the source I have. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't see the, the title of the thing here on my printout. Now, he also said a couple of days ago that he will not allow any goats in Harare, the city center. He says, this is not West Africa. He says, the government will not tolerate the sort of chaos that he has witnessed in other countries. In other words, he doesn't want to see the starving people. As I pointed out before, they're making $900 a year per capita. That's less than $20 a month. These people are starving. So what are they doing? This is reported from New Zimbabwe. Of course, uh, they have to be careful about what they say in uh, Zimbabwe, but they say thousands of people have besieged city centers across the country selling all manner of bric-a-brac in a bid to survive an economic crisis that has seen industries collapse and unemployment reach over 85%. But he wants you to go somewhere else and starve so he doesn't see you in the streets with your goats or your bric-a-brac. Very much like the elites that we have here who come around before the presidential conventions and lock up all the homeless people on the streets because they don't want to see the starving people, except it's far worse there. 85% unemployment. This is a place that had over 11 million percent hyperinflation until they just got rid of their currency, could not save it. So what's the justification for sending this dentist back to a place where he paid this dictator $55,000 for a trophy hunt? And now he's going to be punished by this dictator, by the Obama administration. Because, you know, white privilege and that sort of thing. Great white privileged hunter. Well, the justification for this, again, is the Lacey Act. And as I was just starting to point out before we went to the break, in January of 2014, Gibson celebrated their victory after three years of fighting with the government because they were singled out. And here's the case. They were singled out because not their, their competitor was not, uh, they didn't come after their competitors because of the wood. They didn't come after furniture companies that use this kind of wood, but only Gibson because their competitor was a big Democrat donor. This happened in August of 2011. Armed FBI agents with SWAT gear. SWAT gear came after a guitar company, came after Gibson Guitar, executing a search warrant for the seizure of wood at their facilities. The premise of the raid was an obscure 100-year-old law that they're now going to use against this dentist, the Lacey Act. On the basis of this act, the feds stormed the facilities, claiming that Gibson had broken foreign and not American laws. Notably, one of the biggest competitors, C.F. Martin Company, reportedly uses the same type of wood seized from Gibson's, but they didn't have any interference from the federal government. Why not? Because they pay their protection money. We are turning into a banana republic just like Zimbabwe under Mugabe. That's what this is about. They say, furthermore, no other companies known to use wood in question, such as furniture manufacturers, reported a similar prosecution from the federal government. But in 2014, they had won their victory. 
somewhere in the United States government, and I don't know where, they got justice. They say they announced the government series of guitars to rub it in on the Obama administration. And this I'm reading from frontpagemag.com. <clears throat> it's a series of guitars purportedly made with the very same wood seized by the U.S. government, which was later returned at the end of the fiasco. And the slogan was, fight the powers that be with a powerful Les Paul guitar. Well, good for them. We're going to beat this tyranny of Obama, this corruption of the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. They play the same games. They haven't been as out in the open about the corruption, but you wait until the subsequent administrations because it is a ratcheting process. Even though they've done it under the table quietly, and of course Nixon was impeached for doing to a few people what Nixon has done with the cooperation and the concealment and the cover-up of the entire IRS service. We're learning that they have their own parallel text messaging system because they didn't want to get caught by the emails. And then, of course, when they get subpoenaed by the Congress, they destroy the emails and say, oh, there's no backups of those. The truth is gradually coming out, but we know what they are. We're just trying to get the details. We know how corrupt the system is, and we know that this bureaucracy persists from administration to administration. What we see happening with the Obama administration is most likely going to continue to happen with a Republican administration. This needs to be cut off at the local and state level. We are not going to be able to send a messiah to Washington even if that messiah is Mr. Smith going to Washington, we're not going to be able to stop this, I don't think, because it is a massive, permanently entrenched bureaucracy. Now, I've got another report here from uh, Alex Jones that I want to replay that is about, uh, of course, he's in Spain. And this is one where they caught on camera a man levitating in Spain. It's a great analogy about the deception that's going on, not only in Spain, but also in America. Here's that report from Alex Jones. We're here in Barcelona, and well, there's a lot of magic tricks going on. In fact, the big central banks are issuing, in some cases, hundreds of times uh, the debt that there's actually money to pay it back for. And they do the magic trick of having the controlled media convince the public uh, that, indeed, most of that is owed by them. Like when banks sell a house 50 times or 60 times or 70 times or 100 times, and they have the public bail them out with too big to fail, that magic trick uh, is something the public buys because the media is run by six people. In fact, if you believe the six central banks aren't the biggest corporate welfare people out there, you believe this guy's actually floating in the air. And uh, Rob Duke, come over here. We can show folks uh, that it's simply an amazing illusion. I, I personally cannot see how he's able to do that. It's amazing. Uh, until you realize that there is a metal bar going up under his arm right there that's holding him up. But you need to know that it is still extremely exhausted. But because I know there's a metal bar coming up through there and back through his arm down, holding him up, I'm a conspiracy theorist. A mainstream media person would just say, this is real, this is really happening. So, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. I want to say right now, this guy has defied gravity or he's such an acrobat, he's able to hold himself up with one arm. I believe the mainstream media. I believe fluoride is good for you. I believe vaccines are good for you. I believe Spain is now a free country. Uh, I believe the EU loves you. I believe getting rid of all national sovereignty to the mega banks is the answer. I believe derivatives and counterfeiting New World Order systems are the way to go. Uh, and, and, you know, I believe that uh, the New World Order cares about us. So again, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely amazing. Look at this illusion. It is really hard to believe. And of course, you can see way off in the distance the real world built by civilization, built by humans, brick by brick, and our desires and our passions, that was, that was real. But the globalists have conquered it through fractional reserve banking, derivative counterfeiting fraud. Again, this is just another report from the road on this live worldwide transmission. We are going to now throw the broadcast back to the folks there at the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas. But all of this civilization isn't real. Freedom and liberty isn't real. The fraud of the central bankers conquering everyone is real. In fact, let's go back over here again. 1776 isn't real. The Bill of Rights isn't real. Due process isn't real. Freedom isn't real. This is real. Obama is real. Your free Obamacare is real. Turning in your guns and having less crime is real. <laughs> this is what's real, ladies and gentlemen. Simply, simply give in to the illusion. Simply give in to the new world order. Don't get upset about it. Don't drink three or four espressos like I've done. Just, just go with it, okay? All right. 
Before you go back to the uh, live transmission, if you're watching, you go to infowars.com forward slash show to find the free video feeds. Because if you're listening and hearing me talk about an illusionist, there's a fellow in a black and gold suit, if you're a radio listener, uh, who appears to be levitating about three feet off the ground. Uh, but in truth, because I'm a conspiracy theorist and I'm into how things work, uh, I realize the Federal Reserve is not public, it's private. And I realize there's a bar, a metal plate on the ground, holding him up, hooked to a bar, up under his arm, so it appears he's floating off the ground. All right, with that said, I'm now going to give him a donation, uh, and we are going to end this transmission. But more reports are coming. Infowars.com. If you're watching, you are the resistance. A very convincing illusion, far more convincing than most of the ones that they try to sell us, as Alex pointed out. And we have an article that uh, we saw on the uh, Drudge Report today from The Independent in the UK. What turns someone into a conspiracy theorist? Well, a study to look at why some are more receptive to such theories. Now, this is a new study that will look at why some people are more susceptible to extremist views. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. It hasn't, he hasn't done his study yet, but he's already got his conclusions. <laughs> you understand that? He's going to do a con he's going to do a study about conspiracy theorists, but he's already got a conspiracy theory about conspiracy theorists before he starts because he hasn't done any investigation. Maybe somebody could should explain to this grant seeking whore that these are conspiracy facts. These are people who are skeptical of the illusions that were being sold. We're skeptical of the pat uh, explanations that we see, but we're also skeptical when we see things that we know aren't going to happen. Why did Alex look at that, no matter how convincing that was, that man there that was floating in the air, if you, and if you're watching this on radio, his feet are off the ground, his hand is on a, um, uh, on a uh, stick, on a cane, he's dressed in a top hat and that sort of thing, but he's floating in the air, apparently. Well, we know that that's not possible because of gravity, right? That's where we start. We start with some facts that we can rely on, and we test what we're being told by the government, by the media, against those baseline facts. And when we do, and we contradict or we're skeptical of what the government's official story is, we're dismissed as conspiracy theorists. And yet this guy who is doing the article, uh, he is going to have, there's a whole article about what he knows about people who believe conspiracy theories already. So why does he need the government grant to do this? They say that he is about to launch a new study that will look at, this is all in the future. He hasn't done the study yet, but he's got his mind made up. That's the way the media works. That's the way they come after the public. So here's some of his conclusions. He says, well, conspiracy theorists aren't mad. And by that, he's, he's writing from the UK. So he's saying they're not insane. Uh, I'm mad. He says, they just have certain intellectual character traits. Yeah, we have an intelligence. We're skeptical about things. You're going to knock down three buildings with two planes? Go back and look at the history. Have you ever seen any skyscraper that burned even for days with steel structures like that that just fell down, let alone collapsed after a couple of hours in its own footprint? And three of them. One of them wasn't even hit by a plane. Maybe that should make you think. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Friday, July 31st, 2015. Yes, it is the last day of July. And before we get back to the news, I'll remind you that it is the last day of free shipping for July. We have free shipping on everything at InfoWarsLife.com. Right now we have Survival Shield X2 in stock. It comes and goes just like we have all of our products going out of stock. And so many of these, uh, we just had Knockout go out of stock. I was notified that was uh, one that we had just introduced recently. That is now out of stock along with Deep Cleanse. Survival Shield, however, is in stock. We have over 400 reviews on InfoWarsLife.com. Over 99% of respondents would recommend it to a friend or family. This is our super quality Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine. Here's one of those reviews. Java Hacker from LA, California says it works exactly as described. It made my skin slightly darker, tanner. An improved memory, improved clarity, makes me feel sharper, no side effects, tastes good, sweet, lessened my migraine headaches, lessened my eye pain, makes me feel stronger. I'm going to try the silver and the deep cleanse too. I'm really shocked. Well, uh, deep cleanse is out of stock, I believe, but the silver you can get at buy two, get two for free. So you can get silver at half price as well. It's a good time to stock up on things like silver, on things like iodine that don't go bad, uh, things that do go out of stock, things that you need to have to protect against things in case we have a 
uh, grid down scenario. You want to have vital nutrients and things that you can use as medicine, as disinfectants. You want to have those sorts of things available already because it will be too late to prepare at that point in time. Now, going back to what we were talking about just before the break, of course, uh, Alex Jones had that great video showing the man that apparently was suspended in space where gravity was not working. He was holding a cane. He looked like he was floating in midair. Very effective illusion. But we know it's an illusion because we know about the facts of gravity. We know what our government is telling us in many cases is a bold-faced lie as well. As I mentioned earlier in the show, the CDC has destroyed vaccine documents. And this has been revealed by a congressman. This is an article up on Infowars.com. Yes, it's that CDC whistle case, whistleblower case back again. They say co-authors scheduled a meeting to destroy documents related to the MMR vaccine study. The remaining four co-authors all met and brought a big garbage can into the meeting room, reviewed and went through all the hard copy documents that we had thought we should discard, and we put them in a huge garbage can. That's William Thompson, CDC researcher. And earlier this week, U.S. Congressman Bill Posey pointed that out on the floor of the House. It's not just that, of course. We have the Rhode Island mandates, HPV vaccine for 7th graders starting this fall. All 7th graders in Rhode Island will now have to get an HPV vaccine. And you notice it doesn't say all girls will have to get it. All will have to get it. All will have to get it. They do still have a medical or religious exemption, but wait for it. They're going to come after that as well. Now, that's going to be, if, it, if they harm anybody there with those vaccines, of course, the vaccine companies have been protected by the government with legal immunity. That's the way this is working. We see this pattern happening across the country. We see the White House talking about conspiracy theories. The White House has its own conspiracy theory. Here's their conspiracy theory. You know those videos? Those sting videos that you saw of the people getting uh, the Planned Parenthood directors monologuing like supervillains, talking about how they're going to sell the body parts, how much they make, cutting them up into little pieces, discussing what they can do to make money off of it. That's simply a conspiracy theory, according to the White House. Don't believe your eyes. They're absolutely fake. Ha, huh, what's fake is the facade from the White House. We also see at Infowars.com, Planned Parenthood president made 39 visits to Obama's White House since 2009. That's why he's lying to you. That's why he's trying to get you to believe that this is a hoax. He's got his own little conspiracy theory, but you can see the evidence for yourself. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We're going to be going to a report from Alex Jones in the next segment. The globalist cause is destruction. What is your cause? Alex is going to break down the way the New World Order games the system in their favor. And what is their final solution? It's a technotronic eugenics nightmare. We know that from their own documents. Of course, that would be a conspiracy theory, many would say. But as we pointed out in the last segment, Obama says that these Planned Parenthood videos are fake. That's his conspiracy theory. You need to look at the evidence. You need to look at everything skeptically. I remember when we first, when I first saw the Michael Hastings video, and I saw the tree, the car crashed into the tree, and the engine ejected hundreds of feet down the road at a right angle to where the car was. And it's like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense because if you hit a tree, uh, that impact is going to capture the engine into the car. As a matter of fact, that's one of the major causes of fatality in a car accident is the engine getting pushed back into the driver's compartment, the steering wheel predominantly, getting pushed back into the driver because the engine does not compress. It also doesn't fly out at a right angle. And then, of course, it burst into flames. I thought, well, that's kind of interesting because if you look at this, the back of the car is not compromised whatsoever. The, car, the back of the car was in great shape. It was the front where all the fire was. So it's like, hmm. It's very interesting because you go back and just take a look and see how this works. It's kind of like, you know, gravity, as Alex was talking about, when we looked at that guy that was kind of hanging in the air there in Spain. We kind of know how gravity works. So how does it work when cars explode? Well, we see a lot of car crashes, you know, with Hollywood. Things driving off a cliff, they spontaneously explode. Those are charges for effect. It does happen in real life. You can see some very interesting videos of uh, car crashes and that sort of thing. You can see... There was one in particular that I thought was very interesting. It was a racing track, and these were high-performance racing cars. One of them 
hits an oil slick on the track and goes into a wall, smashes up. It does not explode because it hits the front of the car. And oh, by the way, the engine didn't get ejected at a right angle either. They got pushed back into the car. Another car comes along, hits the same oil slick, follows the same trajectory, comes in a couple of seconds, uh, about five to ten seconds later, comes in and hits that car in the back. Ah, now it's corrupted the fuel tank. And you have a big explosion. But you have to bust the fuel tank. That's, by the way, what has happened with, uh, with Jeep. They just had a massive recall because of a lot of fuel tank explosions because people would get hit in the back of the car, not the front of the car, but the back of the car, and it would cause a massive fuel tank eruption that killed a lot of people. So they've had a lot of lawsuits. They've had a, a lot of recalls, and that's beside the hack that we just saw where people were able to take over a Jeep wirelessly and drive it into a ditch. So, yeah, when we look at things like that, you have to think about it. You have to say, well, I see this guy looks like he's floating in the midair, but I know that that's not true. I know that engines don't get ejected at right angles. I know that cars don't spontaneously burst into flames if they're not hit from behind and the fuel tank is not corrupted like that. So what other possible explanations might there be? And then it just happens to turn out as things are going on that we know, we knew from the very beginning that he had a lot of enemies in the government, especially in the military, because of ex exposés that he had done when he was a reporter. But then we also found out that he was very concerned, and he was on the run. He said the FBI was after him. He had been talking to his landlady, wondering if people had been tampering with his car, that sort of thing. So that's how conspiracy theorists operate. We kind of look at this as a detective would, as an investigation. Now, Obama, on the other hand, can take a look at these Planned Parenthood videos and just pronounce them as being fake because he's been told to say that by his political supporters, like the president of Planned Parenthood, who took 39 vid visits to Obama's White House just since 2009. Stay with us when we come back. Alex Jones on the globalist cause is destruction. What is your cause? We'll be right back. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. The globalists know that humanity has tightness power. All we need to do is begin to release our strength, our love, our vision, and their tyranny will fall. Release the titans. Jones here reporting from Barcelona, right at the edge of the Mediterranean Sea. You can say what you want about pre-existing economic orders and systems, but when you look at the globalist technocracy, it's very clear they're using pre-existing beefs, pre-existing divisions, pre-existing fissures to exacerbate the old system of imperial control, divide and conquer. But this modern imperial takeover isn't seeking to dominate ports and resources and peoples and to drag the best women back to the capital, to deck them in jewels in the palace. It is seeking to dehumanize the population itself because the globalists are now in love with the machines. The machines didn't build that culture. The machines were built by the mind of humanity. But the globalists have a disdain, a predatory hatred of the general public, as all feudalists have throughout history, and they've decided their path to immortality lies in shuttering human destiny and shedding their humanity and merging with some hypothetical futuristic transhumanist singularity. Well, even if that was a fact, and even if you could do that, you don't have a right to take over free humanity and make the decisions for the general public, but they think they do. And that's why from its forced drugging to forced inoculations, the fluoride in the water, to GMO, secret laws by the EU, the TPP, by Congress, 
unified globally so that we can't have basic choices. That's why you're doing everything you can to distract us with the most sickeningly ridiculous distractions of Hulk Hogan going, hey, I love black folks. They call me this, I call them that. Let's get over this. And they use that as a way to divide and conquer. Uh, or they use a few sad cases of psycho cops killing innocent people to further create divide and conquer for globalization to take over the federal government and local police. It is a scientific formula. And whether you're in southern South America or southern Europe or northern Europe or Japan or South Africa, whether you're in Canada or Germany, it is the exact same formula, the exact same playbook that we see being used to take over society. And all I'm trying to do is to get you to realize I've spent 23 years, 20 years on air, almost 21 in a few months, fighting tyranny, studying it, researching it, learning how they operate, reading their white papers, reading their books, and then coming to you and saying, here are my conclusions. Don't have to believe me. Go read these quotes from the congressional record. Go read this issue of foreign affairs. Go listen to what Juan Carlos said. Go listen to what Prince Philip said. Go listen to what Ted Turner said. Go listen to what David Rockefeller said. Go listen to what Queen Beatrix said. It's all about world government to cut off your resources and exterminate you and your family. And they're smart. They do it by successful proclamation incrementally. I mean, they're cutting off our power plants. They're shutting down our textiles. They're opening our borders as they collapse the third world and flooding. Spain is being overwhelmed by African flotillas as Africa collapses after they brought down Gaddafi that was stabilizing all of Africa. Italy is collapsing. I mean, they admit Rome is collapsing. They are doing this to then flood with our social welfare networks, our well-meaning, to further collapse Europe, further collapse the United States as a new political bloc to complete their fascist takeover. And these third world populations will vote however they're told, as long as they're given their payoffs as long as they're given their, their, their domestication feed. And we're domesticated as well. They take our money for 80 years, put it in Social Security, sell it all out, bankrupt it, and then say, pay us even more taxes or we'll bankrupt the whole thing when it's already bankrupt. It's all about betrayal. The globalists have committed to betrayal. They have committed to evil. So why shouldn't they go all the way? They're committed to their cause. What is your cause? How can you even be committed if you don't have a cause? Because more than anything today, we don't have a cause. There's only one way the West could be conquered, and that's if we don't have a cause, if we get up our free will, if we get rid of our basic instinct for preservation of life. And that's how we're conquered by such pathetic death cults as Planned Parenthood and all this Caitlyn Jenner garbage as if that's our culture as a guy in drag. Nothing against a guy in drag, but that's our flag, that's our culture. It's a joke on us. It's the globalists urinating on us like a dog does to another dog, it's dominated. It's all just a, a, a twisted comedy for their enjoyment. Does it matter that I made Endgame 1.5 eight years ago and put all the documents in it, how they plan the whole roll out in the end of the family. Doesn't matter if I'm right. They've taught the public that it's valuable to be a slave. It's valuable to defend your ignorance. It's, it's valuable to not be involved. It's, it's cool to buy into the system. They say in advertising, perception is reality. And I've said many times, if you're on PCP and jump off a 50-story building and think you're flying for four or five seconds, six, seven seconds, whatever it takes till you hit the bottom, you are flying. But when you hit the bottom, you die. So perception is not reality. You could be whacked out of your mind in a spaceship, open the pod bay door, think you're gonna fly out into space. Truth is you'll be dead in seconds. So perception isn't reality. And that's why there's a war against reality and a war against common sense and claims that raising debt limits don't raise debt limits and two plus two equals whatever the government says and they're not coming after your guns, but they are, is an assault on common sense because it stands in the way of everything they're doing. Tyranny has always been overthrown or collapsed from its own weight. And now it thinks because of technology, it's going to survive that and metastasize the next level. No, it's not. All these back doors the NSA built to spy on the people, patriots used to go into Planned Parenthood. All these back doors the globalists built to control, manipulate markets, we simply used to get the intel. 
That is the patriots out there. And they're not patriots for America. They're not patriots for the UN. They're not patriots for Russia. They're patriots for justice who want the new world order. One of the strongest statements ever was from a hacker that was involved exposing Planned Parenthood who said, look, I just want them to come back down to earth. You're not invincible. You're not God. I'll tell you, Napoleon Bonaparte was an incredible Corsican, Italian, French officer who rose from nothing because of his genius level skills at artillery and in management and morale of troops. But he still thought he could beat Russia and he was defeated. He wasn't a nobody who was delusional, but still he was defeated. He got too confident. Hitler won uh, the Iron Cross first class. That's a Congressional Medal of Honor, a very twisted bad person. But, but he proved himself out in the field. It's why military followed him. He was a Congressional Medal of Honor winner. He was like a German Audie Murphy. Who's Hillary Clinton? Who's Barack Obama? Who are all these fake people? They didn't do anything, but they think they're invincible because of the PR propaganda. Let me give you a news flash. You know your mainstream media is losing the info war. You know your ratings are collapsing. You know you're in trouble. So what are you doing smoking your own dope? Believe in your own garbage. Believe in your own baloney. Your own Bravo Sierra to tell us we're going along with you. That's the scariest part is you people may cause World War III. You people may destroy the world because you're so convinced you're invincible because you've taken our decadence as we've been drunk on success and on the past victories of our ancestors and we're laying around while you're busy running the world and you think nobody's there to stop you. You are who's gonna stop you. You're a joke, you're a fraud. You don't care about humanity, you don't believe in humanity and you know why you don't believe in humanity? Because you don't believe in yourself. You're weak and you hate yourselves. We don't need leaders that hate themselves and hate everybody else around them. We need leaders who care about themselves and their families and who have honor and who believe in justice. We're going to get it. You will never stop humanity. You will never stop all the people out there that are waking up. You have failed and you know you're gonna to continue to fail. Humanity will prevail. I'm Alex Jones from the very front lines of the globalist takeover because right here is where you will find the resistance awake and aware and it's happening because for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction. So I ask you all out there, what are you doing today to spread the word, to raise the alarm as the 21st century Paul Revere's worldwide? It is 1776. It belongs to you. It belongs to us all. It is the Renaissance. Take it in your hands. It is your destiny. And as Alex is pointing out, there is a eugenics agenda at the bottom of this. That's why they have to push back so hard against these Planned Parenthood videos. That's why they have to ignore them. That's why they have to make a big deal out of Cecil the Lion and the hunter who paid that dictator $55,000 to hunt in his area. Now they're saying they're going to extradite him. Look at this uh, article that we've been talking about, how the White House, with its conspiracy theory, says that these are fake. Well, what do they base that on? He says, well, they were done in a fraudulent way. Oh, you mean like the FBI terrorist attacks, where the FBI comes in and they uh, get everything set up, they equip the people, they transport the people, they set up everything and then bust them? It wasn't done to that level. That's what our government does in order to justify the war on terror. That is not what was done in these videos. You can look at that and you can see. There's not a lot of evidence behind him, says Barack Obama. No, there is. Take a look at these videos. You will be disgusted. Any honest person will be disgusted. But as Alex pointed out, people are fighting back. This article we had yesterday from the 3301 hacking group uh, that talked to Mikhail Thielen through secure email was talking about how they believe that the second attack on Planned Parenthood was an inside job. And here's their evidence. They say our contradiction was that they claimed they were taking down the server to protect its users, but at the same time, they added a donation page on the very same server prompting for credit card payments. Uh, it doesn't quite add up, does it? Yeah, see, that's the difference between a conspiracy theory and actually thinking for yourself. You can see an update on it today. Now they're saying that they are undergoing maintenance. But again, that site was not hacked if they can still take donations. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Friday, July 31st, 2015. Yes, it's the end of July, the end of our free shipping on everything at InfoWarsLife.com. But you can still take advantage of it today. Everything at the store, free shipping today. Free shipping ends, uh, free July shipping ends today. And we also have a special buy two silver bullet, get two free. That's right. We normally sell out a silver bullet during the winter months. That's summer months right now. You can get it for 50% off. Now is the perfect time to stock up. 30 parts per million, 
colloidal silver. That's silver bullet. You can get it at InfoWarsLife.com. Buy two, get two free, and get free shipping on that and everything at the store. Now, as we were just talking in the uh, last segment, we had that special report from Alex talking about the people who are fighting back against Planned Parenthood, hacking their site, they said, because they just can't take the arrogance anymore. Not only the arrogance, but the brutality. Looking at their emails, and as we pointed out, uh, we had the article yesterday from uh, Mikhail Phelan talking to the hacking group. They said that they believe the second hack was fake because the server was still up asking for donations on the same page, trying to make themselves look like victims. Here's another interesting hack. Of course, we've talked about the wireless hack of the Jeep. They say that's a vulnerability that all, that's about 450,000 vehicles made by Chrysler and Fiat are vulnerable to that. We've seen people hack vehicles in the past. The same hackers did this uh, a few years ago. They demonstrated it at the Black Hat Conference. Black Hat and DEF CON, by the way, are coming up in about a week in Vegas. We'll see some interesting reports coming out of that. But these uh, car hackers that were working with Wired Magazine had done this hack before, but they had to have direct physical access to do it. This time, they were able to do it wirelessly. That's how things change. Now, right now, we had another hack that came out Tuesday about a hack of a sniper rifle. And we talk about how the New World Order can sometimes get hoisted by its own petard. In other words, blown up by its own bomb. I think this is a perfect example. You've got hackers disabling a sniper rifle. Now, this is a sniper rifle that was set up, very sophisticated instrument, set up with all kinds of computer control so that it would not miss. It would turn an amateur shooter, they say, into a world-class marksman. But it can be hacked. And if you hack it, you can't hit the broad side of a barn with it. And it makes me wonder about these computer-controlled bullets that are going to shoot around the corners and so forth and so on. They're going to be wireless. They're going to have to have some telemetry. So I would imagine that there's going to be a lot of hacking and counter-hacking going on with that as well. It was interesting that it was about a, a week ago, I think it was exactly a week ago, yeah, on the Nightly News. And again, if you're not a subscriber to the uh, Nightly News, please support our operation. Uh, you can share that with 20 people. Uh, it's very, very economical, very affordable. You get that every night as it happens at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And I was talking last Friday with Leanne McAdoo about this new report that came out visualizing the tactical battlefield in the year 2050. And of course, they were talking about a lot of very disturbing, it disturbed me all week when I looked at this report, all weekend, uh, a lot of disturbing things. A lot of things that we see that are parallels, I think, to what's going on with Jade Helm, what we see with geospatial intelligence, human domain analytics. You know, Jade Helm is about mastering the human domain. What does that mean? Well, that means that they're going to get all this information they're collecting on you. They're going to collate it. They're going to mine it. They're going to map it. They're going to use it in a pre-crime analysis. They're going to try to identify people before they become violent or extremist, as we've heard Wesley Clark talk about, as we've had a bill put up by Representative Mike McCall to involve FEMA doing grants to identify people that might become criminals. Yeah, that's where this is all headed. You know, you got to understand that when we did the report at the Asymmetric Warfare Center in Virginia, when Joe Biggs and I went there, we did some research before we went there. And, of course, you can find videos. At the time, we found some videos that were five years old. These are videos that had less than 100 views on them. These are people talking about what had gone wrong in Iraq. Why were they losing every one of these asymmetric wars that they do, where they have counterinsurgents that they're fighting? And, again, one man's counterinsurgent is another man's freedom fighter. If you invade somebody's country and they come back and fight against you, they call them a counterinsurgent. So I guess they're the insurgents and these are people who are countering their insurgency. But they said that they were, what, what was it that drove these people? You know, interestingly enough, they didn't say it was religion. They said it was the loss of control over their life, the idea that they had no future, that there was nothing that they could do about it, that they were being controlled. That was what radicalized people. They said religion came later as an undercurrent. And that's why they're coming after the people who believe in the Constitution, who believe in freedom. Stay with us when we come back. We've got another special report from Alex Jones, the Bush Temple of Evil. This is uh, a clip from uh, George Carlin. Looks like we lost the uh, 
audio for that. But of course, what George Carlin is saying, they have an exclusive country club. And as Alex said, you ain't in it. One guy on the one side, the other on the other. Alex Jones here reporting for InfoWars.com. I was driving through Houston and came across the George Bush Monument. They've got them at the airports here. They've got them all over. And it's just amazing when you actually know history and know that his father, George Herbert Walker Bush's father, grandfather to George W. Bush, Prescott Bush was the top Nazi under Brown Brother Harriman here in the United States. It came out in the different hearings. And this is a guy openly promoting world government. This is a guy openly pushing planetary tyranny. Right there, there's one of his famous 1991 New World Order global government quotes. A guy who supported the assault weapons ban. If you want to know why Barack Obama won, it's because he's designed to win. The Rockefeller Republicans are there to be placeholders to make sure the United States can be moved towards the model of China. When he was ambassador to China in the mid-1970s, before being CIA director, they went in and got him to set up the one-child policy and the planned staged economy to use China to leverage out the rest of the free world. Total globalist puppet. Always groveling after tyranny, just like his father did for the Nazis and the McCormick Dickstein committee hearings. Then it wasn't that they were even Nazis. They were just groveling up to the fascist order in an attempt to socially climb. Well, later they found the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and went from just being a backwater Nazi agents to being a major political dynasty here in the United States. And all of the idiot Obama supporters that constantly call my radio show and I see you on the YouTube video saying, aha, your guy lost, Mitt Romney lost. Mitt Romney was designed to lose. Mitt Romney was a placeholder. The fact that you chose Obama and not even the fake conservatism shows you bought into socialism, collectivism that's bankrupt and destroyed every country. But that's what the robber barons want. They want you dependent. They want to consolidate control of this society. And until you figure that out and stop thinking the government's your friend when it's run by a bunch of foreign banks that brag that they've conquered this country, until you realize what the new world order is in their definition, in the Times of London, and the Associated Press when they brag a corporate, global, anti-free market, monopoly government that wants to shut you and your family down. George Herbert Walker Bush, what a disgusting dynasty and his son and all of it to destroy the idea of constitutional libertarian ideas. And it's worked like a charm to drive people into the arms of the peace president Obama launching all his wars and trillions in banker bailouts and NDAA and expanding the Patriot Act and all of it. That's how they manipulate a shallow, dumbed-down population. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Disgusting monuments all over the place. Oh, look at him. He came to Texas for, and worked hard. Come over here, Richard. He came to Texas for his CIA front and started his little fake oil company, Zapata Oil, CIA front, and the Bay of Pigs and all the rest of it. Oh, and then let's go right over here. Oh, they helped bring down the Berlin Wall. Pure crap. Gorbachev, other New World Order guy, the Presidio. Uh, all of it. This disgusting garbage right here. And then let's go right over here. Oh, his son being sworn in so the mega banks could stage 9-11 and bring in their police state when the public now knows they run al-Qaeda against Libya and Syria. And oh, the number one terror threat is conservatives, gun owners, returning veterans. This is how you manipulate people and the dialectic. So funny. All right, that's it. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. And I'm here at the George Herbert Walker Bush uh, Memorial to tyranny and the destruction of America and driving a stake through our heart. Congratulations, Republican Party. Congratulations, Democrats. You've helped America become totally conquered by foreign fascistic megabanks to carry out their agenda of euthanasia against this population via the soft kill program of genetic and chemical and biological warfare known as eugenics. And if you don't know what eugenics is, that's the reason cancer rates are up by over 3,000% on average. Pediatric cancer is up by 10,000%. You're being murdered by the government you love so much. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. Introducing. That reminds me of the who don't get fooled again. You know, the parting on the left is now parting on the right. And we've got a lot of candidates who are going to be in this next debate that is coming up. There's going to be a lot of parting on the right. How do we find the genuine people from the ones who aren't genuine? 
as Alex was saying, a lot of people taunting him, saying, oh, your candidate Mitt Romney lost. He wasn't our candidate. We didn't care about Mitt Romney. Most of these guys we don't care about. I like Rand Paul, what he talks about. I don't agree with him 100%, but I agree with him more than I do most of the others. So it was interesting to see this comment. Some guy says, I, I can't take uh, Alex or David seriously. This is on YouTube anymore when they constantly mention Rand Paul as the only person we can trust. They never mention how Rand Paul was one of the few first people to support TPP and beg Obama to fast track it. Look it up, people. Alex and David Knight are hypocrites. Trashing TPP on one hand, then supporting someone who's been a cheerleader of the TPP before any other Republican. Well, no, do look it up. What you'll see is that we criticized Rand Paul back in the fall, right after the election. He was starting to talk about how one of the key things we need to do is we need to pass free trade. And we said at the time, if he's going to get behind these secretively negotiated trade deals, he's done. His base will abandon him. Instead, what he did was he criticized the secrecy of the TPP before the vote was held. And there were two votes. votes. Remember, it was passed by the Senate, then it went to the House, they changed things, and so then it had to go back and be repassed in the Senate. So there were actually two votes in the Senate on TPP. Rand Paul voted against TPP both times. Two votes against. Get your facts straight. Ted Cruz voted for it the first time. The second time, he voted against it. Of course, Marco Rubio, Lindsey Graham, who are running for president, they voted for it both times. So, yeah, get your facts straight. I don't think that we're going to have a savior that's going to take care of all this stuff in Washington, but at least we can have somebody who is moving the discussion and things that are going to affect liberty rather than playing this shell game like we see the Obama administration and so many of these politicians doing. And so it brings up a question, since we've got Trump as the front runner, what is he about? What are his positions on issues? He hasn't really said much about anything except for immigration. On that, he hasn't really identified, I believe, the key problem. He hasn't identified the, pro the idea that we are incentivizing, massively incentivizing illegal immigration. The fact that we have a North American union for all practical purposes, as we pointed out over and over again, with Petraeus and Pelosi saying, what comes after America, North America comes after. That's what Petraeus said. Pelosi said, we just happen to have uh, one community with a border running through the middle of it. You know, just kind of like Texas and Oklahoma. It's no big deal. You know, people come and go both all the time. There's also the business deals that are coming in that are drawing it in. And so now people are starting to vet Donald Trump. They're starting to look at his use of illegal immigrant labor to make himself wealthy. They're starting to look at some of his business dealings. They're looking at his lawsuits and the testimonies that came out of that. But let's take a look first as to where this guy really is, even on the broad political map. We have a story from NPR. Most of Donald Trump's political money went to Democrats until five years ago. Now, this is something Alex mentioned weeks ago, but this story with NPR is interesting because they actually have a chart there. You can actually see over a period of time how his contributions have shifted from one party gradually to, in the last five years, almost exclusively to the Republican Party. And again, you're looking at the feed. This is in black and white. If you guys pull up the article, you'll be able to see it in color the red and blue, the traditional stuff that they've used with this. They say, while he framed himself as a conservative back when he was giving money and massive amounts to Democrats, his political views have been all over the map during the last 25 years. Between 2010 and 2015, 97% of his donations have gone to Republicans. Prior to that, Democrats had been the primary beneficiaries, taking more than half of Trump's donations between 1989 and 2009. In other words, he starts... As you can see in that chart there now, he goes completely red for the last five years because he's priming the pump for his run as a Republican. And it's interesting because I said, you know, one of the things that he's not talking about with the problems of crime coming across the border are these drug cartels. El Chapo, he criticizes this guy because that happened. They made a big deal about El Chapo being let out by his captors. I'm sure he bought his way out of there. So how did he become El Chapo? Well, he became El Chapo because of the massive war on drugs. Why don't we talk about that? Well, you know, back in 1990, Trump did. He had the right idea, too. He said in 1990, he said drug legalization is the way to deal with drug violence, he told the Miami Herald. When he had an interview with, in that same year with Playboy, he demurred on the topic of abortion. He said when asked for his position on abortion, he frowned, he pouted, pouted. He asked me to turn the recorder off, wrote the writer. He didn't really have an opinion. He said, what w was mine? He said it was a very human moment. 
So he's kind of up in the air on abortion. He's kind of apolitical on most of this stuff. What he really cares about is money. Does that make you feel secure when you know that a guy is, his positions are totally malleable? He's really all about money? I mean, he does. He is smart. He does understand when he said back in 1990 that you get rid of drug violence by, ha by ending prohibition. Yeah, that is the way you end it. It's the way we stopped people doing drive-bys in Chicago back in the 20s, standing on the running boards of Model Ts and opening up their Tommy guns on people. That's the way you start. You start that kind of violence with drug prohibition. You corrupt the police with that. But we've done this now for 44 years, and it's way beyond that. It's destroyed our legal system. It's destroyed families. It's destroyed lives. We've got, we came after the users, not the Al Capones. We came after the users with Ronald Reagan, with mandatory minimums to fill up the prisons because, you know, we have this prison industry that we need to keep profitable. Back in 1990, Trump said, you have to legalize drugs to win the war. You have to take the profit away from these drug czars. He's not saying that now. Why isn't he saying that now? Well, because he is pandering to his Republican voters. So the question is, what will he do if he will say anything, if he will uh, give money to the Democrats and then give money to the Republicans, if he's all over the place on his philosophies? Look at this. The Internet explodes when it finds out who the pit bull behind Donald Trump really is. The guy came into view because he pushed back against uh, something that came up in the divorce of Donald Trump, and this was his lawyer, and he said, well, you can't rape your wife. So that created a massive Controversy. Then we find out when they look at this, Michael Cohen, an executive at the Trump Organization, doubles as Trump's chief political advisor. He volunteered for the 1988 presidential candidate, Michael Dukakis. He worked for a Democrat member of Congress. Yet another Democrat. Yet another Democrat. So the, you know, don't get fooled again, folks. Let's listen to s some of the things that he said in some of his depositions because. Now that they're taking him seriously as a candidate, remember Huffington Post said, we're not going to take him seriously as a candidate. We're going to report on him in the entertainment section. But now he is polling at very strong numbers in terms of polls amongst Republican Party members. So now they're starting to do some vetting, some opposition research. And so what are they saying about him? Well, in one of these, this is the New York Times I'm reading from. He'd been grilled for two hours in a lawsuit over a failed Florida real estate project, Trump Towers. It had his name. It failed, but he said it was just his branding. He didn't have any involvement in it. When the lawyer, Elizabeth Beck, asked for a medical break, he and his lawyers objected, demanding the deposition continue. She said it was urgent. She needed to pump breast milk for her three-month-old daughter. She took the pump out to make her point, and Trump erupted in the courtroom. He said, you're disgusting, and he stormed out of the room, ending the testimony for the day. Now, they say that testimony and a bunch of other testimony that's been drawn from lawsuits since 2007 reveals his personal preoccupations, his business tactics, and his character, folks, because he is telling us that he is a successful businessman. He's telling us that he is a great negotiator, and those are his qualifications. We need to wonder where this guy is coming from because he's not really talking much about policies. He's not talking about how we need to end the war on drugs today. That was 25 years ago. He hasn't said a word about that as far as I know in this particular race. No, it's all about his financial balance sheet and how successful he is. Listen to what he said to some of the people who lost their deposits when Trump Towers failed. He said that home buyers who had forfeited their down payments in a building that had his name were very lucky, quote unquote, because the project failed. He said they would have lost more money if the project had proceeded because of the financial crisis of 2008. So is he going to be somebody like George Bush who said, read my lips, no new taxes? We all knew that he was going to raise the taxes. He had criticized Reagan's idea that uh, you want to lower taxes to make the economy go. He called that voodoo economics. So everybody said, well, wait a minute, are you going to raise taxes? No, no, read my lips. I would never raise your taxes. Then he gave us the largest tax increase we'd ever seen at that point in time. And when reporters called him on it, he said, read my hips. And he went jogging off. Is that what we're going to have? Or is Trump going to say, well, be glad that I raised your taxes because the Democrats would have done even worse. That's what he told the people when they lost their deposits in the building that bore his name. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. I want to take some phone calls in uh, the next hour. When we come back, uh, you know, I don't have that phone number here, guys, but uh, it is. Give me that phone number over the. Give it out over the air, will you? I should have that here. 
Today is July 31st. It is the last day of free shipping for the month of July on all of our products at InfoWarsLife.com. Right now is a good time to stock up on Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine because it frequently sells out. It's in stock right now. It's a good time to stock up on it while you can get free shipping. And again, that ends today. You can see the 400 reviews at, uh, it's over 400 now at InfoWarsLife.com. Over 99% of those respondents would recommend it to a friend or family member. We've been absolutely blown away by this response and you can get free shipping if you get it today. You can get the free shipping for July. And again, I'll give out that 800 number in just a moment. I've got the number uh, for you, David. Oh, you've got you that number. You can call in okay. at 1-800-259-9231. Great. Thank you. So call in with your comments. Primarily, I'd like to get your comments on Donald Trump or Planned Parenthood. Those, I think, are the big issues of this week. Uh, so let us know what you think about those. We'll also entertain other things, too. We'll just take open lines on Friday here, as I was saying just before we went to break, people are taking Trump seriously. So now they're looking at his past dealings with people. What does it tell you about his character? What does it tell you that when Trump Towers went bankrupt, he said people were very lucky that the project failed because they would have lost more if they'd gone ahead and bought it because real estate prices collapsed. He said, congratulate your clients, he told the lawyers who were suing him. Those clients alleged that they had lost tens of thousands of dollars each on deposits that were put down on a building that was never built with his name. And that's his response. So is that going to be his response to tell you something like that when he becomes president? Can you believe what he's telling you about his success? Of course, he's telling us he can't be bought. He's not going to be going to the confab for the Koch brothers. Good for him. I'm glad he's not. But the question isn't, whether or not he's going to be taking that money. The question is, how did he get some of this money that he currently has? Of course, a lot, a lot is being said about the undocumented workers that he had, or as many of us would say, illegal aliens that he brought in to build Trump Towers. This is an article from the Daily Beast came out just a couple of days ago. Trump Tower was built on undocumented immigrants' backs because they don't want to say illegal aliens. They say the use of illegal aliens, and I'm, that's my term, at a Trump construction site, such as the hotel described by the Washington Post this week, is certainly nothing new. 35 years ago, a small army of illegal immigrants was used to clear the site for what became the crown jewel of Donald Trump's empire. If you go back and look at a story 25 years ago, again, in the New York Times, Trump says he didn't know that he employed illegal aliens. He was being sued at the time by union members Led by a retired demolition worker, they charged that using undocumented workers by Mr. Trump avoided paying the pension fund. They say that he should now pay a million dollars to that pension fund, including interest. See, that's the big sucking sound that Ross Perot was talking about. It's not just the entitlements program that Obama is uh, making available to anyone who wants to walk across the open border. It is also businessmen who are incentivizing this because it makes them money. That's why the Republican Party won't do anything. That's why the Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, won't do anything about open borders because they're making a lot of money off of it, folks. Going to the New York Times article back in May of 2011, buying a Trump property, or so they thought. Again, this situation in Florida. Listen to these quotes and see if it doesn't apply to you as a voter. The last thing you ever expect is that somebody you revere will mislead you. I bought into the idea of Donald Trump, and it wasn't what I thought it was. We have to ask ourselves that question about each and every candidate. We have to carefully and objectively evaluate them. We don't need to buy into any more phony images. Don't get fooled again. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We'll be taking your calls. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this Friday, Ju July 31st, 2015. We're going to go to your phone calls today on this Friday, and I want to get your comments on what we've been talking about, Donald Trump, about Planned Parenthood that broke this week. Maybe even you want to talk about the idea that we're going to perhaps send a dentist to face justice under Robert Mugabe's Zimbabwe. A guy that he paid to do a hunt now wants to extradite him. Of course, it's not really about that. It's really about the Obama administration trying to detract attention from what they're doing, try to detract attention from the Planned Parenthood videos, quite frankly. We've talked about it from multiple angles, the hypocrisy of being so worried about the life of one lion 
versus ignoring all of these children who are being destroyed or even the adults who are being shot down in the streets under the new rules that our police operate from that are coming from Washington. Let's not talk about those issues. Let's focus on this one dentist. Let's demonize him. We can all feel better about it. We can all get distracted about it. This is something that if it was done by a government that wasn't absolutely totally corrupt, it could actually be used to help the animals, to call an old animal like that. But that's not the way it happens in Zimbabwe, not in a place that's run by Robert Mugabe. And we talked about that at length, so I'm not going to go back into that again. Let's go to your phone calls. Zach in Illinois. Zach, you want to talk about Trump? Go ahead. Yes. Hi, David. Glad to be on the show. <clears throat> Thank you for calling. Um, sure, sure. Uh, I'll talk about Trump. And I've had many thoughts while I was on hold about it. And I would say, you know, one thing is that Trump is providing, he's providing the topics that your average American are starting to wake up to, which is nowhere near wake enough. But so, you know, people are attracted to him about that. But but I'll go back to George Carlin's comment. You played it. Uh, it's a very, very famous comment. And he's, Trump is in the club. He's part of the club. Yes, he is. Um, he is. You know, you don't, you don't get to that type of wealth without being, uh, simply put, approached. And if you say no to this club, you are not allowed to have that type of wealth. Well, he gave quite a bit of money to the Clinton Foundation, and he said, no, 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 I didn't get any favors for that, but they do kiss my butt, okay? So this is the game that's being played, and you have to understand, what is Donald Trump in it for? I'm very concerned about how he got his money. I'm concerned about some of the things that have come out of these lawsuits, but also there was the opposition research we talked about a couple of weeks ago about how he, on two different occasions, two different projects, he came after people using eminent domain for his own personal good. He went into Connecticut. He went into uh, New Jersey, Atlantic City, New Jersey. And both of those incidents, he came after, in one case, an old lady who had a small home. He wanted that home for his parking lot. He offered her a lot of money. She didn't want it. That was her right not to sell it. So he goes to the Casino Gaming Authority and says, use eminent domain and take the property for a quarter of what I was going to pay her for it. He did the same thing or tried to in a project that fell through in Connecticut against several businesses. And when the Kello versus New London decision, uh, an abomination for anybody that believes that we ought to own anything in this country, when that decision came down from the Supreme Court saying that one big private individual could take somebody's property because they were going to do something that's going to make more taxes for the city when they said, well, that's for public use. He said he was 100% for that. And we know right now, this is not a moot issue. This is happening all the time. This is my big concern, apart from all the environmental issues about the Keystone Pipeline, because they're giving TransCanada, a foreign multinational corporation, the ability to condemn farms that have been in families for over 100 years to take it for their pipeline. That's not right. That's wrong. And it's unconstitutional. Donald Trump is 100% behind that, so I have a lot of concerns about how he got his money. There's concerns even in these transcripts about whether or not he's being truthful about the financial net worth that he has. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more of your calls. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show on this Friday, July 31st, 2015. I'm David Knight, your host. We're going to go back to your calls in just a moment, and we're going to play a, a quick video from President Jimmy Carter. He says that the United States is an oligarchy. This is an interview he had with Tom Hartman. Uh, Reflections at 90, uh, his latest book. So we're going to uh, talk to you about what Jimmy Carter thinks. I think it's an oligarchy. I think we've got an oligarchy of royalty with Hillary and with Jeb Bush. But we also have to look at the Republicans who are going to run as Democrats. Remember, it wasn't but just a few months ago that we elected a bunch of Republicans because most people who voted for them, who voted these Republicans in, the big issues were getting rid of the gun to our head to buy Obamacare and doing something about the open borders and the massive illegal immigration. And of course, I'm for one, do not want to see some kind of a Berlin Wall built there. I want to see us stop the pull of people, the incentivizing of people by both business and government to come into this country. We understand what's behind this. And we understand 
the interests that the Republican leadership share with the Democrat leadership on these corporate crony capitalist issues. That's why they're all together on this Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Transatlantic Partnership. But here we are just a few months after that, and everybody is just, it's, it's turned into a reality TV show. Nobody wants to go back and vet these candidates. They don't want to see where these guys are coming from, where they've been. Donald Trump, a guy who for most of his life was giving money pretty much equally to both sides, but he gave more than half of his money to the Democrats for a very long time. Then just before he decided he wanted to become a Republican candidate, he starts donating exclusively to the Republicans. So I want to take your calls on that at 800-259-9231. We're going to go back to those calls in just a moment. As I mentioned, today is July 31st. It is the last day of July. We've had free shipping for the month of July at InfoWarsLife.com, and that ends today, that free shipping for July. One thing that you can pick up today with free shipping is Silver Bullet, and we have a special in addition to the free shipping. If you buy two Silver Bullet, you can get two free. Silver Bullet is a powerful colloidal silver product, free of artificial additives, perfect for your preparedness supply, it's concentrated at 30 parts per million and a pure base of deionized water. There's a reason that listeners have dubbed Silver Bullet as their preparedness silver. And again, you can get that right now. If you buy two, you get two free. 50% off and free shipping. And you get free shipping for everything at InfoWarsLife.com today. End of July, end of the July free shipping. Let's go back to your calls. Let's go to uh, J.D. in Texas. J.D., you want to talk about Donald Trump? Go ahead. Hey, go ahead. You're on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to talk about how, you know, sad it is that uh, conservatives, and I used to be one, that, you know, they believe that they're truly the awakened, you know, the enlightened individuals compared to the Democrats in this country. But they fall for the same, you know, stuff, you know, the two party system and, and the same, you know, just idiotic candidates that get put out there for them every year, like Mitt Romney and John McCain. Well, I think that happens on both sides. On both sides, they they buy into being a part of this party as if there's something in that identity, like, you know, supporting the Cowboys or the Dolphins or something. And so they buy into that, and they they put blinders on to everything. I'm surprised to see the Republicans, after everybody complaining about Obama's background, about his birth certificate and everything else, and, and there's issues beyond his birth certificate. There's the fact that his family had these uh, connections to the CIA on the one side, and on the other side, they were connected to this Indonesian regime that was uh, backed by the CIA to overthrow that country, a, a, a very criminal regime. He grew up in that country. He went to a Muslim school. How, how connected is he to the United States, even if you don't agree with the commonly understood definition of a natural-born citizen? How do you feel that this guy's got a strong connection to the United States? So... You look at all that, you look at the cons uh, the conservatives who are complaining about that, and now we've got three candidates, if I'm correct, counting them correctly. we got Marco Rubio, we got Ted Cruz, we got Bobby Jindal, none of whom would qualify under the constitutional definition of a natural-born citizen. The conservatives are just fine with that. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Go ahead, uh, uh, J.D., make your, make your point. Uh, and also, yeah, you, you might want to look into uh, who's related to uh to who because that that way you'll know who's going to be the next president since it seems that everyone in the white house seems to be cousins with each other yes absolutely absolutely that reminds me of the of the report that i keep forgetting to throw to let's play this report that i teased at the beginning of the segment president jimmy carter uh talking about his latest book a full life reflections at 90 years old president jimmy carter on how the united states is an oligarchy let's play that report uh, now it's just an oligarchy with a, with unlimited political bribery being the essence of getting the nominations for pres for president or the elected president, and the same thing applies to governors and U.S. senators and and Congress members. So now we've just seen a complete subversion of our political system uh, as a payoff to major contributors who want and expect and sometimes get uh, favors for themselves after the election's over. Absolutely true. And we have seen the price of a presidential campaign go up exponentially. It's amazing how this is exploding. Remember what H.L. Minkin said at the early part of the 20th century. He said an election is an advanced auction of stolen goods. And when you see this amount of money being spent on presidential candidates 
when they're collecting billions of dollars. Already Hillary Clinton has gotten uh, over $100 million, I believe. She's raking it in in massive amounts, and so is Jeb Bush. When you see that happening, you know that there's going to be a totally controlled administration, and that's what we're seeing now with the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Transatlantic Partnership. These are things that are going to massively reorganize the economy. They're going to destroy our rights. They're going to export our jobs. It's going to destroy us in so many different ways. It's being written by corporate lawyers in secret. We're not even allowed to see it. And they have completely greased the skids to let this thing go straight through. Was there anything else you wanted to add, J.D.? Uh, yeah, one more thing is that if uh, Hillary Clinton really is going to be in the ring, people need to, uh, you know, not forget about the whole Mena, Arkansas connection and the massive cocaine smuggling for the CIA. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, just wanted to make sure that doesn't get buried and forgotten in the past. Absolutely. Yeah, we're we're. Uh, we didn't have him on this week, but when Alex gets back, he's going to be talking again to Ch Tosh Plumley, Larry Nichols. Uh, we're not going to let people forget that. Thank you. They should not forget that. And as Camille Paglia mentioned, we should not forget how Bill and Hillary Clinton used their power against working class women. How dare her talk about the war on women? She is the war on women, as some of them have said. Uh, let's go to Brad in L.A. Brad, you wanted to talk about Trump. Go ahead. Yes, Dave. Thank you. Um, I've been around about 65 years now, and I've, Trump's been in and out of the news almost uh, for at least 50 of those years, I would say. And he's always had a reputation somewhat as a kind of a sleazy uh, used car dealer, you know, who lies straight in your face just to get the, the dollar or get the deal done. And uh, I, I just pray that uh, my American brothers and sisters uh, avoid the same knee-jerk reaction that we had with Obama yes. uh, in voting him in rapidly uh, just to get rid of a uh, uh, an anti-American uh, uh, president. And in another, one other point. You know, we're kind of in a damage control situation here with regard to foreign affairs with Kerry's blunders and our uh, uh, separation from uh, Israel and things of that nature, who has been a historical uh, ally of the United States. And I don't know that we can afford a loose cannon on deck, you know, who gets all temperamental and stuff over just minor discussions in a courtroom and let that be the spokesperson for the United States. I ask, please, everyone, look into the backgrounds of every single person that we vote for. Congress is a vestigial organ that needs to be removed. But, uh, Dave, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Thank you so much, Brad in L.A. I want to go to uh, Roger in Kentucky, Kevin in Florida. we got Walt in Michigan, many others we've got. Uh, before we do, though, when we're talking about Trump, before we get off of Trump, I just wanted to read you. One more area where that, that came out of this New York Times story where they went back and they look at the depositions from these lawsuits. Of course, he had the situation that uh, Brad was just referring to where he lost his temper uh, with a lawyer who said she needed a, a short recess to do uh, some breast pumping. Okay, He said, you are disgusting and stormed out of the thing. And, of course, he was also telling people, you're lucky that you lost your deposits with me. If you had bought the home and had actually gone through, you'd have lost even more. Well, there's also questions about what his net worth is. There were questions that came up in these lawsuits. Was he really paid a million dollars for a 2005 speech? No, in actuality, it was 400000 he said. And he said, I'm no different from a politician running for office at the time. He said, you always want to put your best foot forward. So what is he telling us right now? Because right now, he is a politician who's running for office. Well, one of these lawsuits was a defamation lawsuit where he sued a reporter for talking about how he had inflated assets. So they talked to him about how he arrived at the value of some of his assets. So in this court deposition in New York, they said, well, you had some property that you were uh, valuing in uh, Westchester County, New York. They said uh, it was worth $80 million one year and then $150 million the next. I say, was it your view of the value of the property that changed from 2005 to 2006? He says, yeah, the value of that property had gone up substantially. I said, well, did you have an appraisal done? He said, no, I don't believe so. Did you have any basis for that view other than your own opinion, asked the lawyer? I don't believe so, said Trump. And as they point out in the New York Times, they say that unconventional approach may raise questions about Trump's public claim that he is now worth more than $10 billion. It's a little bit subjective, perhaps. I don't know. 
Let's go to uh, Robert in Kentucky. Uh, Robert, you want to talk about uh, something about Homeland Security. Oh, wait, we got a, a break. Stay with us. Robert in Kentucky, Walt in Michigan, Kevin in Florida, and others. We'll be right back. We're taking your calls on this Friday edition of The Alex Jones Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're taking your calls. That number is 800-259-9231. If you'd like to call in and talk about the big topics that we've been talking about this week, of course, one of those is Cecil the Lion. They don't want to talk about the Planned Parenthood videos, except to say it's just a massive conspiracy theory. You shouldn't look at that, says Obama. Well, you can look at it. You can make up your mind. There wasn't anything about those videos that was any different. As a matter of fact, it was a lot more credible than the FBI investigations of the terrorists, where the FBI comes in and they promote this to these people. They equip them. They train them. They carry them to the so-called terrorist site and then bust them and say, look, we're keeping you safe. That's why we need to listen to everything that you do and watch everything you do. That's why you have the security status so that we can do these phony raids and they're all phony folks. No, this was people going in. The only thing that they made phony was their own credentials to say that, yeah, we are really here, somebody like STEM Express. We really do want to buy baby parts. And then they videotaped what these people had to say. It's very real, but we don't want to talk about that. We want the misdirection. Obama is the master of misdirection. He's the master of head fakes. He's the master of the shell game. Now we have Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe saying that he wants to extradite this evil dentist that paid Robert Mugabe $55,000 to do a trophy hunt. But now they want him back as an example. Let's listen to the clip uh, about Zimbabwe wanting him back. They want him extradited. Let's hear that clip. I'm very happy that I've been following on Facebook that uh, almost 500,000 people are calling for his extradition. And uh, we need that support because this is the route that we are taking as Zimbabwe. We are taking the issues very seriously. As we frantically tried to protect our wildlife from organized gangs such as this one, there are people who command respect in the society, such as Dr. Walter James Palmer, a well-known dentist, and Theo Bronkhorst, an experienced licensed professional hunter who can connive to undermine Zimbabwean law, international laws, and CITES regulations. Pretty high and mighty, isn't it? We want to talk about an organized gang. Let's talk about that Marxist kleptocracy they call Zimbabwe, run by this tin-pot dictator like Kim Jong-un. Goes by the name of Robert Mugabe. Walt in Michigan, you want to talk about Mugabe? What's your comment? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, David, I want to point out something which is never mentioned about Mugabe. Mugabe was raised as a Roman Catholic and studied under Jesuits who are the ones who initiated socialist communism in Paraguay from 1600 to 1756. You read the extreme oath of the Jesuits in uh, Library of Congress card 66-43354, and you'll find out who the socialist communists are. And Mugabe is one of them, and he's a double talker and promotes uh, making lots of money. This Dennis paid him lots of money. Well, who's the richest organization in the world? It's a Roman Catholic Church run by a Jesuit, former Jesuit cardinal, promoting redistribution of our wealth. Well, we Alex certainly, yeah, we Alex certainly do Alex have a pope who has. You have a pope now who has absolutely nothing to say about these Planned Parenthood videos. He has nothing to say about the change of marriage and whatever your position are on those issues. Isn't it strange that he wouldn't talk about any of that? But he is pushing very hard for a global government in order to control global warming. And the guy that he put on to his scientific advisory council, Sheldon Hoover, is someone who is not only pushing the nonsense of global warming, but he is pushing for massive depopulation. And of course, as we pointed out before, the corruption of this kleptocracy, the hypocrisy of them saying that they want to see justice done. When you've got Robert Mugabe five months ago, they, they want to make a big deal about it, this dentist who paid Mugabe to do a trophy hunt when Mugabe for his birthday was given a lion as a trophy, was given a crocodile as a trophy. And as we read at the beginning of the program, 
over a million dollars on his 91st birthday party. Tens of thousands of guests eating exotic animals left and right like a baby elephant because, you know, just a regular elephant isn't exotic enough. They've got to go to a baby elephant. Let's go to Andy in Indiana. Andy, you want to talk about Donald Trump? We've got just a little bit of time here. If it goes a little bit long, we can hold you after the break. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, David. Um, a couple of things on Trump. First of all, I like the idea that he is self-funding his own campaign and not taking donations. Hang on. We don't have time for that. We'll get that second point when we come back. Yeah, it's not an advanced election uh, uh, auction of stolen goods, but we have to ask, did he steal the goods before he became rich? Is that how he got his money? There might be a question about that when you look at those eminent domain cases. Is it the art of the steal? Stay with us. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this Friday, July 31st, 2015. We're going to go back to your calls. we got Andy in Indiana on the line. Also coming up, Kevin in Florida. Roger, Kentucky, and Gerald and Kelly and others, hang on. We'll be right with you. If you want to call in, get in the queue. It's 800-259-9231. Again, as I just mentioned, today is July 31st. That means it's the end of our free shipping for July special today. You can still get free shipping on everything at InfoWarsLife.com. We have in stock Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. It has over 400 reviews. You can read those there. Make up your own mind. Over 99% of those respondents would recommend it to a friend or family member. And we also have, besides our free shipping, a, another sell on Silver. Silver Bullet right now. If you buy two, you can get two for free. Silver Bullet is a powerful colloidal silver product free of both artificial additives and perfect for your preparedness supply. Concentrated 30 parts per million in a pure base of deionized water. There's a reason listeners have dubbed Silver Bullet as their preparedness silver. And again, you can get that. You can stock up on it. It's something, uh, as we point out, you keep in your preparedness supply. It's not going to go bad. We have it in stock, and you can get two for free when you buy two. That's 50% off and free shipping, not just on those two products, but on everything at InfoWarsLife.com. Let's go back to uh, Andy in Indiana. Andy, you just said that you liked uh, Donald Trump because he could finance his own campaign. I think that's great, too. Of course, there's questions about how he got his money. People are complaining. There's been numerous lawsuits complaining that, like many other businesses, uh, he has hired illegal aliens. He said in the lawsuits that uh, he did not know that they were illegal aliens at the time. Uh, how does that make you feel? I think, David, I think that for us to have a businessman even in the running is a great idea, like it was with Ross Perot. And I think with any businessman, especially the one at the top, it's very difficult for him to run a completely clean business, especially when you get down to the grassroots of what your business is, knowing exactly what's going on from one operation to the next. So I think if we're dealing with any businessman, and we, I, in a way, I think that for president, it would be important for us to have a businessman at this point, and not a politician. But if we have a businessman, especially one of the means that Donald Trump has, you're going to have legality problems. You're going to have problems with immigration somewhere in his system, somewhere along the line. That's just how it is in American business, unfortunately. Well, um, how, how, what is, are there about policies that you like of Donald Trump? I mean, is it just the fact that he's a rich businessman that you think is good? Because I get that feeling from a lot of people. And, and certainly when he made his announcement, he said, look, here's my balance sheet. I'm very rich. You should vote for me. I'm not beholden to anyone. And yet, I think he's doing a lot of deals with people, and I kind of wonder if he would be doing deals if he got elected president. Just because he's got a lot of money doesn't mean that he doesn't want it anymore. One of the things that I've seen with very, very rich people, do you remember when somebody asked John D. Rockefeller, he was the richest man in the world at the time, the reporter asked him, they said, uh, Mr. Rockefeller, how much money is enough? And he said, just a little bit more. My opinion is that the ultra-rich see money as a drug. They can never get enough of it. They're addicted to it. And Jesus said, the love of money is the root of all evil. So other than his being an extremely rich businessman, what is it about his policies that, that uh, attract you? Well, first of all, I'm a Ron Paul, I mean, I'm a Ron Paul and Rand Paul guy. I'm just, you know, looking at Donald Trump as a candidate 
and, you know, playing devil's advocate, basically. But, you know, he did say in his announcement, you know, in speaking about ISIS in Iraq, you know, that he was going to bomb the hell out of them. And, I mean, you think that's you know, a good these, idea? You think are... it's a good idea to bomb the hell out of Iraq? <laughs> What, what, what has that done for us for the last 10, 15 years? Has that really made us any safer? But, but dude, you're, you're asking me what he said. And, yeah. you know, yeah. that, was, that was one point. Yeah. I know. But, um, I mean, you, you like that? You think I that's a, a good not, idea? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just saying. No, I was asking but, what, uh, what, one, what, I'm asking you what, uh, what policies that you personally think are, are a good idea that you would vote for, for Donald Trump. I mean, is it something beyond a Howard Beale sticking his head out the window and saying, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore? I understand the frustration. I'm frustrated. I want to understand, though, what these people are about. I want to know what their character is about. I want to know what policies they want to put out. So what do you see about this that is attractive to you? Well, at, at this point, I think what is most attractive about Donald Trump to me is that he is calling out these issues that people need to think about and can get behind. We're still a year, more than a year away from the election, and as far as policies go, I don't hear any of these candidates talking a whole lot about policies. Well, I've heard Rand talk about policies. I've heard him talk about how we need to change the surveillance state. I've heard him go before the head of Homeland Security and say, uh, you don't have the authority to get a search warrant from Mr. and Mrs. Verizon. Have you ever read the Constitution? Do you know that you have to get a search warrant that is specific to the person, the place, the thing that you're looking for? You have to go before a judge. You can't go before a FISA court, which is supposed to be for foreign operation only. You can't go before a FISA court and say, I want to listen to all the phone calls from Mr. and Mrs. Verizon. I've seen him propose a lot of very specific policies and legislation. I've seen other candidates propose specifics that I don't agree with, but I haven't really seen much from Donald Trump. And so that's that's my take on it. That's why I asked for people to call in for Trump, because I haven't seen anything other than him identifying things that people are very frustrated for. They voted for Republicans uh, in this last election, and the Republicans immediately thumbed their nose at the electric and said, we're, we're not going to uh, do anything about Obamacare. We're not going to, we're not going to touch that. We're not going to do anything about the uh, immigration system whatsoever. Well, I, again, and I said, I, I'm, I'm a Rand guy. I'm, you know, I'm fully behind Rand, but as Donald Trump speaks, I think that it's important to let him get these issues out there, raise a little bit of hell so that people can hear the opposition can hear, everybody can hear, and and have to address the issues. To have him in the debate, I think, would be key, regardless of whether he, I mean, whether he has policies or not. If he's bringing those things up and making people talk about it, then let's hear what the other people's policies are regarding those problems. Well, I agree. I'd like to see him in the debate. I'm not saying that. I definitely would like to see him. In the, I would like to see. Him in the debate, but they're bringing, they lowered the levels of the debate so they could bring in Lindsey Graham and Carly Fiorina and other people who don't even have 1% support. They changed the rules of the debate, precisely in my opinion, so that they could push Trump to the side and shut him up. Uh, there was an article that's uh, up here. People are warning Hillary, uh, Jeb not to uh, get involved with, uh, with Trump. Insiders warn Jeb Bush, this is on Politico, don't engage with Trump. The old maxim applies, never wrestle with a pig. They say you get dirty besides the pig likes it. They want to push Trump to the side. They don't want to have him in the debates. That's why they're going to have so many people in there, besides the fact that it's going to be a ratings uh, circus. The whole thing is a reality TV show circus. They don't want to have a serious discussion. I, I agree with you, Andy, on that, especially that if he gets in there and he, and he brings up some issues, he'll force them to get out of the uh, usual pat responses that they have. But I think the persons who are really bringing up issues that the others aren't talking about are Rand Paul and, to some degree, Ted Cruz. I'm not a Ted Cruz supporter. I don't think he's even qualified to run for president. But at least he'll talk about things like getting rid of the IRS uh, and the income tax. We need to have that kind of discussion. Uh, thank you. Let's let's uh, give some other people a chance here. Let's go to uh, Kevin in Florida. You want to talk about Hillary? You've been on hold for a while. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, David. Before I get to my point about Hillary, what I've seen, I just want to – I've listened to all these callers. I, I believe Donald Trump is scum, and I, I honestly believe he is just a placeholder for Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton, and I don't agree with anything. I, I totally agree with you saying you, nobody you believe he's, any policies. You believe he's dumb? Is that what you said? No, I, I just believe – 
believe he's he's like he's scum. He's like Planned Parenthood. Anything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I okay. Yeah, I think I, he's I a. A lot of people portray him as as a dark horse because they like to talk about this like it's a horse race. I've said before, I don't think he's a dark horse. I think he's a stalking horse for Hillary. I think he's a stalking horse for Jeb. I mean, he's given a lot of money to the to the Clintons, as Alex pointed out. You know, playing the the clip of. Um, Carlin saying it's an exclusive club and you're not in it. We had uh, Jimmy Carter talking about how this is an oligarchy. It's, a, it's an advanced uh, auction of stolen goods. I mean, all of this stuff, it's a phony situation that's going to be playing to the Bushes and the Clintons people that uh, Donald Trump has been giving money to for a very long time. But go ahead, uh, talk about Hillary. Yeah, so I, I live in, in Florida. I live in Jacksonville. And um, there's some weird stuff going on with people trying to vote for Hillary or get people to donate for Hillary. So what they're doing down here is they're setting up tri stations so they'll find a road that has three uh, red lights or just street lights in close proximity, and they have people stationed at the lights, and they have signs that say free cupcakes at one, and they'll say free water at another, and then the third one will say uh, free car washes, and then there's where they're doing the car washes, it's always a pharmacy, and it's always a big money pharmacy, either a Walgreens or a CVS. Um, I'm sure other places that have Red Aids, we don't have them down here. Um, and there's giant signs that say pledge for change, and I think it's kind of ironic that they're giving away these things, you know, trying to get people to change what's going on. Why would you give away something? You know, Rand Paul doesn't do anything like that. I think Rand Paul. Well, she's got a lot of money. She's got she's got massive amounts of money, and as Rand Paul pointed out, you know, she's taking a lot of money from Planned Parenthood. So uh, don't expect anything to change along that front. You're talking about these ready for Hillary signs. I, I think the the thing that is um, going around the internet, the meme ready for oligarchy, done the same way as her sign. I think that that nails it exactly. There was a thing on the Onion about Hillary Clinton. And it was a satire piece that Hillary Clinton suspended by the FEC from campaigning for three weeks because she's caught spitting on staffers. <laughs> I mean, these are people who are kind of leaning towards the left, but even they see her absolute and total arrogance. I mean, we had the book from the former Secret Service agent talking about how being assigned to protect Hillary Clinton was considered to be a punishment detail. <laughs> this is the way this whole thing runs. I think they just pulled that up there from The Onion. Of course, there was another funny one from The Onion about Donald Trump that was absolutely hilarious. Another satire. He tells Iowa farmers he has 500 cows, uh, cows that are 500 times bigger than theirs. He told an assembled group of dairy farmers, your cows are small and scrawny. You should be embarrassed to milk them. He said his cows were the size of at least a dozen Cadillacs and had udders that'll make your head spin. No one raises dairy cows as gigantic or as successful as I do, said Donald Trump. Everyone knows that. My, cattles are my cattle are winners. You people would be lucky to have them graze here. <laughs> of course, that's satire. But it captures exactly the tone of Donald Trump, a man who, as part of a lawsuit deposition, would tell the opposing attorneys, your clients are lucky that they lost their deposits on Trump Towers. Because if they had bought those places, they'd have lost even more money in the 2008 collapse. I mean, that's the kind of attitude of Donald Trump. And it's like, I'm scratching my head trying to figure out what anybody sees in this guy. I, I see a casino thug. I'm sorry. I, I've seen enough people like that. My wife is from New York. I know a lot of people like Donald Trump that act exactly like that, that act like a thug, and I don't, I don't get it at all. Uh, let's go to, uh, thank you, Kevin. Let's go to Roger in Kentucky. Roger, you were calling about Homeland Security. Something about that. Go ahead. Yeah, let me, uh, let me give you the uh, biggest conspiracy um, that I can. Um, if you go to Google, type in CDP or Aniston, Alabama, um, you know, Center for Domestic Preparedness. Um, I've talked to Alex before about uh, SIM cards or similar things being placed in this uh, when I was in the service, and then I served on uh, a deployment team for the Department of Homeland Security. And very quickly, in most of our classes, we were taught that uh, eventually there would be the need for a short whether that be two, five, or seven-year paramilitary state where we, along with police and the military, would have to uh, assist in controlling the public 
because of some outrage, whether political, racial, um, economic, different reasons, mm-hmm. economic. Uh, but it was always uh, this big consortium of who we were going to work with. And in these classes, you know, we had uh, tactical doctors and tactical paramedics, um, fire, police, um, you know, everybody that you would come to rely on or you think would, you know, turn and, and go the civilian way, uh, being, you know, we were, we were taught. It, it, they called it right out. You know, we're going to have these right-wing organizations that are going to be domestic terrorists, and because of that, it's going to get so bad that we're going to have to institute. Most people would, would call it other things, but it would be called a paramilitary uh, engagement. Uh, you know, not martial law. Paramilitary is what we were told. That's oh, how yeah. we would serve. They're not going to uh, use the term martial law. That would be something very specific. They would have to declare that. Let me ask you, Roger, uh, you work for Homeland Security, what, and, and, and you're concerned about a paramilitary period of time. What do you make of this legislation that was put out by Representative McCall saying that they're going to counter violent extremism? That's going to be a new division in Homeland Security. They're going to place it under FEMA. The grants, at least, are going to be placed under there. They're going to be looking for people who have the potential to become extreme, the people who have the potential to become violent. In other words, it's kind of a pre-crime scenario. And at the same time, we've got Wesley Clark floating out this trial balloon saying, hey, if you're disloyal to the United States, if you want to talk about the United States and criticize it, that's your right. But we have a right to lock you up before you become violent before you become a radical. What is your take on those those two things coming out within a very short period of time of each other recently? Essentially what that is. Now, everything is going to come out of FEMA. The thing is a really soft name. Um, a lot of people don't realize how many branches there are to FEMA. But when people, the general public, think of FEMA, they think of a hurricane. Okay? Um, but... FEMA is a, and the, the Department of Homeland Security are all in one. Uh, and the branch, and what they're talking about is if you, let's say, are buying human guns and reading the right books and listening to the right uh, radio stations and watching the right TV, uh, they may be, you may look as though you could, you know, create uh, a problem. So we're not going to do anything, but detain you long enough to instill fear in you and uh, hold you as long as we can, and then those that you associate with uh, are likely to back down. Yeah, yeah, indefinite detention without trial by the military. We've seen that authorized by Obama on a New Year's Eve. Thank you so much, Roger in Kentucky. We've got to go to break. We're going to come back. Stay there with us, Gerald, Kelly, Devin, others. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Friday, July 31st, 2015. Just quickly, all of our products at InfoWarsLife.com. Today is the last day of free shipping for July. I would be remiss if I did not tell you about this story that's up on the Drudge Report from Daily News about the newest study saying that cell phone radiation can cause cancer. This is a meta-study, basically a study of hundreds of other studies, they say, on the Daily News. It reveals the findings of many previous researchers and how radio frequency from your phone can damage your DNA. The damage can add up. It's cumulative over a period of time. It can cause a variety of health problems, they say, like cancer, headaches, fatigue, even skin problems. For example, they say just 20 minutes a day for five years increase the risk of one type of brain tumor threefold, threefold, 300%, folks. Using the phone an hour a day for four years up the risk of tumors Three to five times, 300 to 500% increase in tumors. If you're going to use a cell phone, use it away from your body. Use it away from your head. Don't keep it in your pocket all the time. Keep it away from your body. The cell phone manufacturers will tell you that. They put that in there as a warning. It's simply plausible deniability. They will deny that it has any effect, but they'll put it in there as a warning. You've been warned. Take care of yourself. Make sure your children don't do that because they're the ones that are using the phone a very long time holding it close to their body. Let's go back to your phone calls. Uh, let's go to Gerald in Arkansas. Gerald, you want to talk about the elephant in the room. Was that the one uh, that Mugabe was the baby elephant that he was eating in the room, or is that some Republicans? What is the elephant in the room? <laughs> no, the elephant in the room is the uh, fiat banking system, which actually yes. pays for 
all this stuff that you've been covering. So it, it, the symptoms is not as important as the cause, which is the fiat banking system, because they, they own everything by fiat. Yes. I, I mean, uh, I, I talked to my family about this, and they don't get it, that you can get on a computer. That's what the uh, Federal Reserve does. It's digits. There's no real money Gold and silver is the only real money, Article 1, Section 10 states. No state shall make anything in payment of debt except gold and silver coins. Absolutely. And that was one of the things that was so important about Ron Paul's campaign. He educated so many people about the Federal Reserve, the private Federal Reserve that manipulates the markets, that creates this fiat money that is at the root of all this. And certainly when we look at this, what is it that you have people coming in running as governors and saying, hey, I've managed a budget. If you become president, you don't need to manage a budget. You don't need a businessman who can manage a budget to become president. It's an open ticket. All we do with the income tax that was created about the same time as the private Federal Reserve, we're just paying the interest on the loan to the Federal Reserve. It's like a massive reverse mortgage, you know, the kind of mortgage that you get when you're old and you own a house and you say, well, I don't have any income, so I'm going to get income from the bank each month, and when I die, they're going to own the house. Well, you know, we're dying as a republic. It's a balloon note at the end of this reverse mortgage, and that's what this whole thing is. Absolutely, I agree with you, Gerald, in Arkansas. I want to move quickly because other people have been holding for a long time. Thank you for pointing that out. Let's go to Kelly in South Dakota. Kelly, you've got some solutions. How you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm a 15-year info warrior. Glad to be on the show. Oh, thank you. I just want to, coin, mm -hmm. I, I want to just coin a few phrases. I know we've got people, other people to listen to. Um, basically, I want everybody to know as of today, Little brother will be in charge because we're going to start watching big brother. And they don't have a new world order. They have a new world disorder. That's Everybody right. who was around in D.C., big cities around politicians, watch them. Put the two fingers to your eyes and let them know, I'm watching you. Watch them. As soon as, as they go down the street, everybody should just look at them. We're watching you. When they're in the restaurants, watch them. And if they don't like it, hey, you pass the bill. And they say to watch and listen to us. How does it feel? Oh, that's right. They don't want us to see anything that they do, do they? <laughs> they want to know everything we do, but they will not allow us to see anything that they do. And, of course, there are tons of documents, nuclear documents, about this Iran deal that at the, the Obama administration is keeping 17 unclassified Iran deal items locked up because, you know, everything they do is a secret. Well, that's it for today's show. Join us tonight at 7 Central for the InfoWars Nightly News. <laughs> I wanted to bring Weldon Henson in here briefly because we have a great sponsor. Boy, I've sure been enjoying the firearms that I've gotten from him. HDfirearms.com. That's Head Down Firearms. They have super high quality 223s, 308, you name it. It's called 556, technically, in the 223, that are guns that would be $3,000 or $1,500. Guns that would be $1,500 or $900. They've got a bunch of super high quality customization services, holsters, uh, accessories. Weldon Henson, tell us about some of the great accessories available at hdfirearms.com. Well, the important thing to remember is that if you're not in the market to buy a brand new rifle, you have an AR-15, you have an AR-10 platform 308 rifle. They've got everything you need to upgrade it. Buy a new part, buy a new trigger, buy a new muzzle brake, buy a new handrail. It's all an upgrade for your rifle because these are all superior top of the line quality products made in America. Tell folks uh, about their low profile series. Well, this is an important thing to have. You know, this is untraceable. You, anybody can get this kit right here. You don't have to go through a, a federal firearms license place. Uh, you can have it shipped right to your house. This is what the traders have been trying to shut down. Absolutely. So you basically have everything you need besides a lower receiver because that's what's traceable. That's what's serialized and that's what the, the federal government's after. But. Uh, you can get this right here. Get your own lower receiver any way you want. There's different programs. All you gotta do is your own research and you can find out how to get a lower receiver so that you can put it on this. Maybe you already have a lower receiver from an AR from way back that you just don't quite use anymore. It's old, something like that. You can throw it on this. You basically have a brand new rifle and you saved money by putting it together yourself and buying this kit right here, which is cheaper than the actual rifle. And they've got the highest quality barrels, the highest quality triggers. We're not just saying that. Go look at the third-party reviews. Tell them about the new rifle they're producing that's getting amazing reviews. And then I just got one, this 308. Yes, that is very... Arcadius. Arcadius. That's very exciting. They just came out with their own line of um, AR-10 platforms, which is basically an AR-15, but instead of it being a 5.56, it shoots a 308 round, which I know you personally like shooting a 308. 
Um, I like them both. I mean, just to be clear, they've always for years been making this for the big manufacturers, the high end. They're just absolutely. now not private labeling. They're putting out their own guns. Yes. Well, the one they sent you, I'm actually jealous of. It's a beautiful gun. Um, it's set up and configured for long-range shooting, marksmanship-type things. Just the scope alone is something to <laughs> snuggle with. It, yeah, it's a Vortex 4x16 scope, which you can get it head down as well, their distributor. Um, and and I think things for people to remember is that if you want a 308, you don't have to get the 18-inch barrel. You don't have to get the 22-inch barrel. You don't have to get it set up for marksmanship. You can get one with a 16-inch barrel that's set up for more of an assault weapon type you know, uh, uh, configuration. So anything you want, people just call head down. You can get anything you want made there. And any configuration you might want on your rifle, they're, they're able to do that. And they have 100% perfect customer service ratings there. Bottom line, it's not just firearms, a ton of accessories, very affordable, and it supports the info war. If you're not shopping at hdfirearms.com, you're not helping the info war. I mean, this is a win-win. Thank you all for your support. Check them out today. Thank you, Weldon. Here is our party must continue to strike fear about white privilege. White privilege is our real enemy, but eventually that's going to be focused on the white man. And so Robert Mugabe is very upset about these white safaris. He said uh, over a feast of exotic animals, he took to the pulpit, they say, this is a Washington Post article five months ago, to excoriate safaris. He says Zimbabwe has a lot of safaris, but very few of them are African. Most of them are white owned. In our region, we have the most safaris and animals. Now, why wouldn't they have black people in Zimbabwe picking trophy hunts? Well, because they make $900 a year. $900 a year. The dentist paid $55,000 because he doesn't live in a Marxist dictatorship. He lived in America. But, of course, we're going to go down that direction. Now, let's look at what happened with the Gibson raid. And, of course, we reported on this back in April, back in. Uh, August of 2011, headlines on InfoWars at the time were Feds raid Gibson Guitar Factory over protected wood. Another one, CEO of Gibson Guitars, main competitor is a huge Democrat donor. This is the Lacey Act. This is what they want to use against this dentist. Now, to sum it up, and this was an article that was done in January of 2014 by Front Page Magazine because Gibson at that time was commemorating Obama's raid with a government series of guitars patterned on Les Paul, but using the wood that they got back. And I want to go over that as well as some more information about this Cecil the Lion thing and the hypocrisy from yet another angle that we see from the Obama administration right when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We're going to take your calls in the third hour. We've also got reports coming up from Alex Jones. I was talking just before the break about the leader of Zimbabwe complaining about white safaris when he is feasting on baby elephant at his 91st birthday a couple of months ago. And also talking about why he's disturbed that there's just so many people coming to his country, ripping them off with safaris when he's getting $55,000 per safari. And understand, that's not going for animal preservation as it should. That's probably going into this corrupt kleptocrat's pockets. That's the way this has worked. He has parties that cost millions of dollars, has tens of thousands of people there. They feast on these exotic animals. And he has his own trophy lion as well as a trophy crocodile. And that was just from one guy who gave him gifts. Now, of course, in America, we've got IRS political scandals where they're targeting people politically. They are committing perjury. They're committing cover-up. Will the Obama administration investigate that? Of course not. They're not going to investigate Benghazi. They're not going to investigate Clinton. They're not going to investigate the VA or Fast and Furious. They're not going to look at the price fixing and the money laundering of the big banks. Uh, no, they just give them a slap on the wrist, a very small fine. They're not going to even look at the jihadi shooter who was going around targeting military recruitment statements. No, no, no. It was, I don't know, it was maybe it was he was on alcohol or pot or something like that. That was the excuse. It had absolutely nothing to do with terrorism. That couldn't have possibly been his motivation. They're not going to look at the shooter. Won't even talk about this shooter in San Francisco that resonated with so many people when Donald Trump started talking about it. No, can't talk about that. Can't talk about the fact that we don't deport violent criminals who come into our country 
violating our laws, crossing the borders. No, it's a catch and release program for our violent criminals here. But if we have a dentist that we can make a big deal out of, get some political capital from by having a petition on the White House site and then saying we're going to export him under the Lacey Act to this dictator in Zimbabwe, they're all for that. Yeah, they're all for that. They'll talk all about Cecil the Lion, not about the black people that are getting shot in America, not about the children that are getting ground up for trophy cars. Now, where are they going to send him? Well, Zimbabwe, this place is uh, high on the list of Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch for places that violate rights, violate the rights to shelter, to food, to freedom of movement, residents, freedom of assembly, the protection of the law. There's been alleged assaults on instituted violence and contentious land redistribution policies. Muasa would bring out the big guns. He would kill a baby elephant. He said, well, it's no big deal. The elephant was no good anyhow. But this elephant was not enough, just the baby elephant. They say he, Musasa, also submitted for mass consumption two buffaloes, two sables, five impalas. There was also a lion that was shot and mounted. Oh, a trophy lion for Mugabe, the guy who's now demanding, along with Obama, that this dentist be sent back. And who knows what they're going to do to him because he went trophy hunting, because he paid the government of Zimbabwe, $55,000 to do that. That's, as I said, a legitimate thing to do if you've got a legitimate government. But they also gave him a lion that was shot and mounted. This is for Zim, uh, Mugabe's birthday party. They also gave him a crocodile that was shot and mounted. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this Friday, July 31st, 2015. I'm going to go back to what is going on with the fight to export or to extradite, I should say, the dentist. Of course, we're not going to extradite or send or deport any illegal aliens, no matter the fact that they're killing people in this country. Can't be bothered with that. But we can extradite this dentist to Zimbabwe, where he paid that corrupt government $55,000 to do a trophy hunt. And we're going to talk about Zimbabwe, kind of give you some context for what the Obama administration is doing because there's another context of this as well. There's also the raid on Gibson guitar from four years ago because they're using that same law, the Lacey Act, to come after this dentist. Before we do, as I mentioned, this is the end of July. We've had free shipping at InfoWarsLife.com. Today is the last day for free shipping in July. And we have a special. Buy two silver bullet, get two free. It's 50% off. Normally, we sell out a silver bullet during the winter months, so right now is a perfect time to stock up on your 30 parts per million colloidal silver. You can get it at InfoWarsLife.com as well as everything on the site with free shipping today. Again, free shipping for July ends today. That's at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, getting back to what I was talking about with this uh, export of... Uh, the, the extradition, I keep calling it the export, the extradition of this uh, dentist to Zimbabwe. Uh, this is based on a, started out with a petition on the White House uh, site. Of course, the Obama administration doesn't pay too much attention to petitions. We had a petition to uh, get rid of Piers Morgan. <laughs> they didn't do anything about that. But let's go back to uh, this birthday party for Robert Mugabe. This is the one where he condemned white safaris while he's eating baby elephant at a birthday bash. And this just happened five months ago. This is something that is very recent. And as I mentioned, not only were they killing baby elephants for food, they were also eating buffaloes, sables, five impalas. This is just from one fellow who was a landowner that needed to suck up to the dictator. Uh, he also shot and mounted a lion because we had a lot of people say, well, you know, I understand hunting, but only if it's for food. I don't understand trophy hunting. Well, they did trophy hunting for Mugabe as well. And as I pointed out, trophy hunting can be used as a means of preservation if you don't have a corrupt banana republic thug dictator like Robert Mugabe. This is a guy, let me, let me give you an idea, because this is really where all of this white privilege, this uh, Marxist education system that we've got with people like Bill Ayers and others that are allied with Obama, this is where all this white privilege narrative, the, the hatred, the racism towards one group. This is where it leads. You want to know where it leads? Take a look at what happened in Zimbabwe. And of course, there was a lot there for people to be angry about. They'd suffered under white colonial rule from 
Cecil Rhodes for a very long time. It was called Rhodesia before they overthrew it. But they jumped out of the frying pan and into the fire. This guy says, there's a couple of quotes from Robert Mugabe. The only white man you can trust is a dead white man. Our party must continue to strike fear in the heart of the white man, our real enemy. Now, the only difference in what Robert Mugabe says and what you'll hear at a university, if you're foolish enough to pay the tuition to go to one today, the only thing you'll hear, there were slideshows, but nobody was talking about the latest revelation of the Planned Parenthood video. They weren't talking about the previous ones either. That was all being pushed into the background. And so I asked the question, we talked about the different parallels with it. The idea that this was a gray legal area, that there was luring going on to get this lion off of the preservation area into an area where he could be killed. He was killed in a way where he died under a great deal of pain over a very long period of time. Trophies were taken where they cut his head off as a trophy. And we said, interesting, isn't it? The parallels that could be drawn to the Planned Parenthood situation where they go into these gray areas. They lure women into the clinics under the promise of health care or family planning and then push abortions on them, as Abby Johnson testified uh, this week. Then they put them through a procedure where there's a lot of pain. They chop up their body parts and sell them off, not as trophies, but in order to buy their trophy cars, their trophy homes. That's the parallel that we should be talking about. Of course, there's other parallels. USA Today, uh, Kit Daniels also ran an article about it, the parallels with ignoring the murder of black people as if it's a license to kill if you have a badge in this country. It's open season. There isn't any preservation park for black people in the cities or for the rest of us, for that matter. We're following along all of society. This isn't just about black people. Everybody is getting shot more frequently because that's the way they are engaging the public now. So when we look at this, there's even one more thing that has come up, of course, and that is now the calls for punishment of this dentist to extradite him to Zimbabwe. And of course, the Obama administration has had a petition on the White House uh, saying, yes, we want him extradited and punished in Zimbabwe for this because he didn't break any American laws. He broke Zimbabwe laws, they say. Well, I don't know. Do they have any laws in Zimbabwe? This is a place very much like North Korea. Robert Mugabe, dictator for life. He's 91 years old. He became dictator back in 1980. 35 years he's been there. And if you want to know what kind of banana republic Obama is trying to create in America, take a look at Robert Mugabe's Zimbabwe. It's absolutely amazing. Per capita income of $935. Okay, that's about $75 a month. $19 a week, okay? Now, in that environment, this dentist and others have paid $55,000 to do a trophy hunt. Now, you may not like trophy hunt. We've had a lot of people say, well, trophy hunting, that's awful. Well, okay, fine. But if it was not a corrupt government, that trophy hunting could be used, as it has been used in other places, to preserve animals to allow a controlled kill of some animals so the other animals can be preserved. So it's not entirely bad. But when you run it like Zimbabwe is running it, then that $55,000 just probably went into the pocket of their lying king, Mugabe. Look at this article. Five months ago, he had his 91st birthday. This is from the Washington Post. Zimbabwe's Mugabe condemns white safaris while he eats baby elephant at birthday bash. They say, when considering what to get Mugabe for his birthday, one must first can understand that Zimbabwe's president is a man who demands the finest. His birthday parties don't cost hundreds of thousands, they cost millions. His parties aren't attended by thousands of people, but by tens of thousands. And they don't eat elephant, they eat baby elephant. Dumbo. This was the predicament in which one local landowner named Tendai Musasa found himself when trying to figure out what he could get Mugabe for his 91st birthday party. What do you get a dictator who has everything and who owns the company, country and is going to uh, take severe recrimination on you if you don't give him massive amounts of money? So this party, as I point out, cost over a million dollars. The first quote from this guy says, well, we regard him as our father, says Musasa.
Yeah, just like they love the North Korean leaders and they cry rivers of tears when they die. And if they don't, they get carried off to the camps. He says, for such a courageous man who years ago... It's just amazing to see the news day after day. Besides this Planned Parenthood issue, just the... The political news that is coming up, the bombshell that the CDC is destroying vaccine documents. This is a, a Congressman Bill Posey on Tuesday. Made his last stand on the House of the floor. He was given five minutes to speak, and he talked about how the co-authors of this vaccine study that they tried to cover up, the whistleblower Thompson pointed out, said they all got together in a room, decided what they were going to get rid of. They had a big garbage can there and just start trashing through the stuff because, you know, you can't can't be allowed to see what actually happened in these studies. It's not just the vaccines. It's also Climate Gate, where we weren't allowed to see the emails that were paid for by the public, paid for university professors who were doing research. That research conclusions had been published. There wasn't anything proprietary about it at the time. It was being used for public policy. But, of course, we were not allowed to see the raw data. It's pretty easy to put any kind of conclusion you want to in something when no one is allowed to look at your raw data. That's the way the game is rigged. Of course, we see that with these treaties that are being done, but there's also a lot of other secrets that are going to be coming out. We've got a story we're going to talk about a little bit. The man behind the white safaris who feasts on baby elephants. The Lion King, I guess we could call him, or the Lion King, Robert Mugabe. A lot of similarities between Mugabe and Obama. And we're going to talk about that because now the Obama administration is looking to use the Lacey Act to send this dentist back to Robert Mugabe. What's up behind that? Do you know about Zimbabwe? Do you know about their economy? Do you know about their dictator for life that they've had? Do you know how this is a place very similar to North Korea? We've seen the Lacey Act used before in the Gibson guitar raids. Do you remember how that turned out? They did in January of 2014. They did a government issue of a Les Paul guitar just to celebrate their victory over the government. But now it's back. The Lacey Act, where if you don't break American laws, but perhaps break a foreign law, they can get at you that way. Particularly if there's something to be gained politically about it. We've talked about, uh, we talked about it on Tuesday how they were ignoring everything that was happening at Planned Parenthood, certainly in the Obama administration, but also within the media, and then focusing on Cecil the Lion. So we're going to go into that in a great deal of detail. We also have some updates to the Planned Parenthood situation. Several articles. We had the article yesterday, the original one from uh, Mikhail Thelen, talking to the hackers. They said, hey, look, this is a false flag, this second attack on their website has been done to get donors to support them. We're going to talk about additional evidence that has come to light in that. We're going to talk about other health news, not just the vaccine cover-up and uh, the CDC, but now Rhode Island is mandating HPV vaccines for 7th graders. Sounds kind of like Rick Perry. I wonder if their governor, governor has connections to Merck, like Rick Perry did indirectly at the time. We've also got an article on uh, from the Drudge Report it looks like radiation can cause cancer after all. But don't worry about that because now we've got robot magnets that can eat brain tumors. It's not a tumor. <laughs> Remember uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, they're, they're going to solve all these technological problems for us. Uh, at the same time, they're coming up with massive laser weapons. It was only a week ago that we were talking about the Pentagon's vision of warfare in 2050 but you can see the article up on infowars.com 1984 comes to europe the end of freedom in, of speech in spain even jokes about royals are illegal i guess so are the monty python jokes about the spanish inquisition because that's essentially what we have here i guess alex didn't expect the spanish inquisition uh no actually they knew it i guess it's, it's still annoying when people come up and demand that you cannot photograph public buildings, uh, cathedrals, take away your film, erase it. This is what they do at federal buildings already in the United States, of course. They do that kind of, they, they say, well, you can't take a picture of the Federal Reserve, you can't take a picture of this particular building, even though anyone can go to the internet 
and they can look at Google Maps and see that building, taking a picture on a street corner does not present a security risk to anybody. And let's understand that all of this stuff about national security, homeland security, it's just a way of taking your freedom, right? Let's just call it Homeland Taking Away Your Freedom Department or the Transportation Taking Away Your Freedom Administration. Whenever you see the word security from our government, just understand that it's all about taking away your freedom, enslaving you. You're not going to get any security from it. As I've said many times, a maximum security area is called a prison. And that's what they're building here in America. They're building it all over the world. That's what we talk about, prison planet. Let's go to that report. 1984 comes to Europe. Orwell's nightmare scenario come true. Ladies and gentlemen, we filed a series of reports for the radio and TV shows at Infowars.com. Alex Jones here reporting live from Barcelona, Spain, beautiful historic city on the Mediterranean Sea. But I was just pinching myself like it was a dream. The fact that it's in mainstream newspapers, what they call a bizarre series of laws that have been rammed through the Spanish government and regulations banning any form of criticism of government, period. Government services, you name it. And it's also extending on to corporations. And again, even the newspapers in the UK and in Germany say this is just bizarre. I, I, I mean, it's so over the top, it's beyond 1984 for the types of offenses that people got arrested for uh, in that fictional world that George Arwell came up with. And then it just hit me. The reason all of this is happening is Spain has submitted to the globalists and the bankers, because Juan Carlos is right at the top of the pyramid and is being sucked dry right now. And they're using that money to consolidate the takeover of U.S. roads, U.S. water districts. It's Juan Carlos and companies like Centra that are at the heart of these no-bid contracts taking over U.S. infrastructure. So just as the Spanish are conquered, then their money is used to come in and conquer the infrastructure of the United States. We're all under attack by this. And it's the corporate welfare, the banker bailouts, uh, the state-backed companies like Centra and others that are able to do this, turning our roads into toll roads, doubling and tripling our water prices. This is the scientific tyranny. But the real reason they're putting in draconian anti-freedom of speech laws and other things here in Spain that even mainstream media publications call 1984 and over the top and bizarre is because they're getting ready to really drop the hammer and have a worldwide financial collapse. And I believe Spain, that's why we're here, is the next domino. Uh, the tyrants love to have the facade of freedom. And when they start removing the veneer of liberty, when they start taking that away, you know big stuff's about to happen. Look at what's happening this week in China. Look at what's happening uh, in Greece. Look what's happening all over the world. And it lets you know this is a very, very serious time to be alive. So uh, there's nothing like eyes and ears on the ground to really confirm what we've been seeing in the press and what we've been getting from our guests and experts is that the globalists see humans basically like another species, a worthless group. They've got their computers, their robots, their automation. And this implosion of the economy is about bringing us to our knees and domesticating us and conditioning us to submit. More reports to follow at Infowars.com. Humans have the power. And so if you take action, if you get involved, if you inform others, there's no way that the technocrats will be able to get away with this. So it just hit me that this is about the collapse being imminent, not just of Spain, but the entire continent of Europe. And then out of that crisis, the true world government will be formed. All right, Alex Jones signing off. More reports coming at Infowars.com. Again, we're going to have some more reports from Alex Jones later in the broadcast. Now, earlier this week, we talked about, and I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, we talked about how people were very upset about Cecil the Lion. We had Jimmy Kimmel crying about it. All the news media was talking about Cecil the Lion. Everywhere you went, 